Hey, hey, Gaijin, you got you got time to record a third fleet podcast? Hello, hello, Rui. What's up? You got time to record a third fleet podcast? I I wish I could. Hello. I, I'm sorry. I'm busy with Asterion right now. Can I get back to you a little bit later? Hang on a second. I'll see you later. Okay. Two hours later. Okay, hey, what's what's up? Sorry. Can, can you make some time to record a third fleet podcast? Um, maybe give me 18 hours? I'm in the middle of, like, my ninth playthrough of Baldur's Gate 3. 17 hours? 16? One eternity later. Gaijin, please, I want to record a third fleet podcast. Dude, there's been so many Dragon's Dogma 2 news. Ah! Okay, you know what? Roll a d20. Um, persuasion. If you can get a 20, you got me. Otherwise, I gotta get back to my game. Day two. Gaijin, I wanna record a third fleet podcast. Can we talk about Baldur's Gate 3 as well? Yeah, sure. Woo! I'm in. Alright. Shields up, Iron Breakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another episode of the Third Fleet Podcast. I'm here with Gaijin Hunter. How you doing, Gaijin? I'm doing good. Congratulations. Achievement unlocked. You got me away from Baldur's <laughs> Gate 3 for like an hour or two. That's that's quite an <laughs> achievement. Even my, my bed and pillow can't do that. It's It's been absolutely insane. We've been trying to get together since the start of the year almost, and it's just straight mm -hmm. up not happened at all because it's the Gaijin's been too busy. No life in Baldur's Gate 3. How many playthroughs are you on at this point? I think we're finishing up uh, my ninth playthrough, her seventh, and we're, we'll probably be starting our next playthrough tomorrow. Jesus Christ. That is insane. Like I, I know that I know that the game definitely has the potential to do all of those playthroughs because of the different branching path choices and all of that stuff. But it's still impressive because it was like, you, when did you start the the actual day? I mean, if you just want to minus my stuff and just talk about the last five hundred hours, that was December twenty first. <laughs> yeah, five hundred and a month. You know, five weeks. So. But, um, it's kind of crazy. It's like even on our most recent playthrough, we're seeing so much new stuff yep. every single time. It's unbelievable. So this is one of the reasons why I would like to apologize to people. I actually don't have show notes because the the way that we've been we've been trying to schedule this, it's kind of like, oh, hey, Gaijin, you busy today? Uh, no, today I'm busy. Okay. And then last night I was two in the morning. Hey, Gaijin, you think we can do this tomorrow? Yeah, sure. I was like, damn, I was I was hoping you would say no. <laughs> because <laughs> i don't have show I, notes I was, I was just thinking i was like man it's gonna be the weekend we're gonna be starting a new playthrough now's the better the best time if any uh but uh yeah and, and i know that one of the things that people like to point out is that ev even something that happened during the your early final fantasy 14 days was that oh my god but gaijin spends so much t so much time playing these games 500 hours since december 20th you guys need to understand something He's doing this with his daughter. Like, if, if I could play video games with my kids and they didn't have, like, school already... Because you guys were just in vacation, right? There's some kind of vacation. Yeah, yeah, we had the, yeah, the New Year's, we took a long break, so we played, like, 14 hours a day. Yeah, it's so it's like, if I was able to take a long vacation and just game with my kids all day, I'd do the exact same thing. I don't give a damn. Mm -hmm. People need to understand. It's quality time. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Like, if he was just playing it by himself, that'd be a different thing. But if you're playing with you, yeah. I think it's actually quite healthy and a ton of fun that you guys can have doing that. But, uh, so, so nine playthroughs, you say. So tell me more about those. For me, seven together. But, um... By, by the way, can you, can you close your door? Because, like, I can hear you playing on the other she, side. She's beating the hell out of uh, one of the bosses right now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh go ahead seven playthroughs you were saying no so it's great so like we we did our i think our first playthrough you know you really take it slow you see everything and that's like a good 80 hours or something like that or 90 uh -huh. 
then you get do another playthrough, you do it completely different. And then by the third or so, she discovered the Dark Urge. And she loves the Dark Urge. That's like her main character. And then, so you want to see everything, right? You want to play the Dark Urge, you know, where you give in to the Urge all the time. Then you want to play it where you don't give in to it at all. And, you know, you want to see all those permutations. And you want to date most of the the cool characters, try out different classes. And it's not like, okay, well, you could take one game at level 12 and reclass yourself. But it's not the same, right? You know, like starting out as that class and doing it. It is. It is end. different. Yeah, because because th that's actually one of more. Th that's actually one of the aspects that I always found interesting of some of the people that would watch my stream, because they would keep telling me, "Oh, you know that you can multi-class, and if you use this particular feat, it's going to be way better, and you're going to be way more efficient." I was like, "I don't care. <laughs> I'm role playing. That's the whole point yeah. of Baldur's Gate, and you know, Dungeons and Dragons is to role play." Like, no, I'm, you... I'm a multi-classer. Like, I I actually like the min max, the bis, no, but you I... know, the second slot, and. She doesn't. She likes to single class it. And you know what? It's fine because, like, we played through several times on normal or hard or whatever. And we're like, okay, well, this is way too easy. So we went to tactician. That was way too easy for us. So we decided, okay, we're going to do an honor mode run. Yeah. So for those listening who don't know the difference of that, it's, it's a basically the hard mode, but it's a single save. So not only do you have to live with the choices of the and dice, it's hardcore. If the four of your people in your team die, it's it's literally over, because you have no one to revive. It's that's the end. Um, your yeah. honor mode run is over. Um, the bosses have legendary skills that activate each turn, so they're really difficult. Um, yeah, and it's just really. I mean, there's workarounds like you could have one person just sit back at camp if there's a particularly dangerous area, so that if the three of you die, you can bring them back. Like there's various levels of insurance you can put on your party and how you play, but we played it and we got to literally the final end, like one centimeter, like literally the area where the yep. ending happened. <laughs> and because because our characters were using potions of invisibility, the cutscene bugged out and didn't trigger. Uh. So we're sitting there at we're basically sitting there at the stairwell, and it should trigger the cutscene that brings us to the ending. But instead of that, it says, "No, you're in, you're in a battle." And there was, we literally bypassed like 70 enemies. And so every single one of them swarmed the top and, and killed us. And we, we lost our honor run because of a bug. So we went back the second time. See, that's. We made sure no invisibility. And we, we killed everything on the way there so that there was not one enemy living by the time we got to the finish line. See, that's the, that was one of the things which, um, I mean, for starters, uh, I've, I've already told you that I, I put that video title. I, I almost kind of regret putting that video title because it, it was good for like YouTube SEO and stuff. But I now realize that most people have the completely wrong idea of whether or not I like Baldur's Gate 3. And it's very frustrating because there's a lot of people that think I don't like the game. When I do, I just needed to talk about the criticism that I had for Act 3, and you just pointed out one of the things, which is they still have a couple of bugs in there that are extremely frustrating. And I played it on release, which was way worse than what you guys are playing right now. So, yeah. Yeah, and you know, that's not a problem on any other mode except for Honor. because Yeah, because you can just reload uh, an, an if, older save. And yeah, stuff. like if you go down an elevator and your character's collision doesn't detect that they're on an elevator and they fall to their death, it's kind of funny. But if you're in Honor mode, it's not so funny. Yeah, <laughs> <know>? exactly. <laughs> um but that I'll bring up that later when we talk about Dragon's Dogma. But I think there's a serious fear when it comes to single saves for that reason. Like the more complex games get, the 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 more this type of risk can actually become an issue. I think. Yeah. But, you know, we weren't we were we were frustrated, but we went right back in. Um, and what was really funny is I was crushed when that happened. Like really crushed. Like. But then you tears. I was so frustrated. And then Yuna said, we're going back in. And we started that next morning. And by the afternoon, the next day, we beat honor mode. We put in 18 hours. But you guys, in the you day guys and have been, we you guys have been skipping cutscenes. then. You only don't skip the ones that you haven't seen yet, I would imagine. Because 18 hours yeah. is like super yeah, short. I mean, if, I mean, if we wanted to speed run it, we, we are really good at the game now. So we... Yeah. 
we've learned all and that's what i like about the difficulty modes it's like the it's actually not that hard except for the bosses uh most of it it's you can circumvent most I mean, difficulty with clever play yeah you i know? mean if like, you're using once you understand the environments and all that kind of stuff if like you're using you barrel mancy and pushing people off of cliffs and stuff like that yeah there's I mean, a there's lot people of people who have soloed honor mode which is crazy like no party members but one there's someone who beat the whole game at level one there's someone who beat it like with salami only it's so you can do just about anything it's really creative and fun it's one of those situations where i feel like the game is hard um until you understand how the systems work almost kind of like dark souls a lot of yeah. people have this notion of dark souls that oh my god the game is so hard it's impossible but the reality is once you know how the systems work in dark souls it's one of the easiest games you'll ever play in your life so yeah you I, learn how to break it pretty fast and it's pretty fun yeah I, I kind of feel like it's the same thing with Baldur's gate i i said when i finished my first run that i was very interested and replaying it i'm just waiting for them to patch the game some more i want to do dark urge playthrough but now i we also have the schedule like all fold up with a bunch of games that are coming out yeah but i don't know how you're gonna do because i think Baldur's gate is so meant so much content that you can't is. see in one way through it's ridiculous and it's been really fun just the two of us like you know we we, we love a lot of the same characters both how does, and literally in the game how does yuna like the overarching plot like compared to, because you know that in Baldur's Gate you have those different the the characters, the story of the different characters and whatnot, which those yeah. I absolutely loved, pretty much all the ones that I engage with. But the overarching plot, like I've told people multiple times, it's not my favorite story. I think, and again, when I say this, people always think that oh, work on saying the story is bad. No, I think the story is good. I just don't think I like it. These are two very different things. I'm not saying that it's not a good story. I'm saying it's not my type of, you know, again, I can't get into it because mm. of spoilers, right? But you know what the yeah, overarching think, themes are yeah, and whatnot. So keeping, so keeping it spoiler free, I think yeah. the way I think about it is that the story is really there for world building and for setting the locations and setting the overall set pieces right it's not mm -hmm. there to be in your face all the time it, in that way it reminds me a lot of mass effect 2 which i adored because you had this much larger conflict which is very high fantasy you know and high stakes and gods and devils and all that kind of stuff so you knew the stakes but it was more the personalized stories that happened in between all that that mattered the most mm -hmm. and so i think it does a really good job of setting up the stakes in each act they're very they're very different act one two and three are very you know, they're almost like their own games in a way. Um, the themes are simple and easy to grasp. They go really well with the character stories. And I think if the main story was any more complex and less about setting the stage, I don't know, maybe that's what gives me that D&D &D feel, right? Is that it's it's giving you all this stuff, but it's really not forcing a whole lot of story down your throat during it. It's, it's saying, here's the main checkpoints, but in between that, you figure out how that's going to play out. And so I really like the fact that it's not overly complex or in your face or mandatory, so to say. There's a lot of stuff you don't have to do in that game. Yep. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, but um, it, was, it was actually funny because... I love it, actually. I think it's great. I think I, it, it really fleshes out the world for someone who's not as well-versed in D&D. &D. It really gives you a playground I've, to play in without, you know, pushing you. Have you played Dungeons and Dragons before the tabletop? No, I mean I think I played a game of D and D in middle school, but that was about it. Oh God, D and D is so good. Like I, I, I always, yeah. I always wish I had played it even more. I only played a little bit, and we were all noobs. We didn't really knew what we were doing. Like the first D and D session, it was so weird because every character went their separate way. Because we didn't know what we were doing. So, like, my character was a lumberjack in a mountain. <laughs> like, that was it. <laughs> it was so weird. Rolling it, perception in your lumber chops. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was one of those things where we didn't know what we were doing. So, it's just, like, ended up everybody. And, and somebody, one, one of my other friends kept just, like, messing stuff around town and then blaming it on me because he was a high charismatic yeah. rogue. And I was like, you understand? We're just sabotaging each other, which is why I had to go live in the mountain. Because I was banished yeah. from town. But I mean, D and D also is, you know, only as good as your as your DM, DM right? Yeah, and that's much. where I think where I where you might view it as lackluster. I view the main story of Baldur's Gate three as a no. massive positive thing no, but, because 
it doesn't i mean can you share some of your criticisms of it without it's getting like, too yeah, deep? Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the thing is, I did, again, I don't, I didn't say lackluster. I said I think the story is really good. I just don't think I like it. I don't like the overarching themes. It, it's mostly my my biggest thing, and you're gonna immediately understand what it is. And most people that play the game will understand what it is if if you know it. It's what happens at the end of Act Two, because there's not a whole lot of choices, and you have to side with that one character. And I don't like See, that I, character. I really would love this spoiler <laughs> talk about this because I don't understand where you're coming from on your your displeasure. I really don't. After doing so many permutations of the story, I really don't get it. I think maybe you overthought it or you just didn't. I don't know. Hi there. Editor Rurikon here. My apologies for interrupting your Third Fleet podcast listening experience. I would just like to inform you that me and Gaijin discuss some Baldur's Gate 3 spoilers in the next segment. Should you wish to avoid said spoilers, then please advance about 6 minutes and 30 seconds. This should put you at the 22 minutes and 53 seconds mark. I'll give you a couple of seconds to pause and advance if you wish to. Thank you for listening to the Third Fleet Podcast. But... Uh, tell you guys what, everybody skip, uh, if you don't want to get spoiled, skip two minutes ahead in the pot, no, two, let's say three minutes ahead in the podcast. That should be about enough. We're going to go into act two spoilers here. Okay. Uh, so I can tell Gaijin exactly what my problem is. Cause we I'm haven't sorry, able to, really we haven't been that. able to, to have this conversation because you weren't done with the game the first time we talked about it and I didn't yeah. want it to spoil it. I don't like the fact that you have to side with, uh, what's his face? The name of the, the emperor. the emperor. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't like that. I hate the emperor. I hate yeah, him. And you it, don't have to side with him. I mean, you kind of do. Because if you don't, you get transformed no, you into an illithid. I mean, there yeah. are certain points in the game where you have to understand that there are more, there are situations where you are not as powerful as you want to be. And so you have yeah. to kind of go along. For example, when you're in the crush with, uh, what's her name from the Githyanki, you're you're standing in front of a gith god, right? And she's a she's an asshole. Yeah, no, but that's that's um, fine. Like I like died you there. Kneel and play along, even though you don't want to. Yeah, no, but I, you play along for the fact that you can just you don't have to follow them. Yeah, I know, but it's like that part. I thought it was okay. The reason why the Orpheus incident I feel is not okay is because so at the end of Act Two, if you you know you try and you free your which I did my first playthrough. I tried and I was like, no, I'm going to kill the Emperor, screw all this. I'm going to save the, the, the guy that's in there. And yeah, yeah. the literal second that you get rid of the Emperor, boom, you're, you're an illithid. It's over. Whatever. Okay, fine. I, 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 so end of act, not end of act three, but you go back there, act three, I have the hammer. I'm good to go. And I get there. You break the first stone. Emperor says, I don't like you anymore. I'm done. We're not friends. Instantly leaves. But you don't get turned into an illithid. Why? Uh, it's okay. So let me make sure I explain it properly, so that there's I don't mistake it. So the the first time you run into them, the only thing that's stopping you from becoming He's an illithid protecting you. and getting screwed over is Orpheus's brain is being used to protect you from exactly. the emperor. But no, the emperor is protecting you from the Giga. Whatever he doesn't the, have the power. It's it's the yeah, exactly. he's no, using the power, of but he's using the power of Orpheus to protect you. Correct. And the moment that you know you kill him, that's it. So are you telling yeah, me that when I break the first stone and he tells me screw you, I don't like you, I'm leaving, he's still protecting you? He's not. So Orpheus is still in chains when you break the first stone. So Orpheus is also not protecting you. So who's protecting you? I mean them. That that might just be, I mean, because usually when you break him free, you don't, you do it after you've already confronted and became enemies with the emperor, usually. Yes. You, 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 I think maybe you're just, you found a hole where maybe you skipped the dialogue. You said, yeah, I'm just going to break him free instead of talking about it and arguing about it. Yeah, but the and thing so is, like, you can't set him free. You have to break both, both stones. So you break yeah. one stone, emperor leaves, where's your protection? You don't have it. But yet you're you can transform. The... I was also inside the thing when I killed the emperor. See, see. I mean, <laughs> but, you but can interpret. Like, I mean, I mean, if you I, want, I know. To, every look, time look, I've ever gotten can... an argument with him, but, I've but listen, managed to free Orpheus before that happens. Can... Before what happens? Before like you. Usually, I get in a fight. 
I say I'm going to free Orpheus. We get in a fight. He he says, well, then you are my foe. And he's gone before I even free Orpheus. Yeah, th- th- that that's even worse. And so I'm... Well, Where's I, your protection when Orpheus is still imprisoned? He can't defend you. Nobody can defend. But anyways, we can just call that yeah. a minor inconsistency. Fundamentally, yeah, yeah. the thing, the, the overarching thing that I'm not a huge fan of is that the whole game is kind of like trying to push you to sympathize with mind flayers. In a lot of ways, I feel like that's one of the themes. And, and like, There's only one mind flayer I sympathize with, and that's us. Yeah, yeah, but the thing is, it's kind of like pushing you in that way. At least I felt like that pressure of, oh, you know, mind flayers, they're not that bad, and but but but. And I'm like, no, I want to kill them. I want to kill them all, okay? I just want to kill them all. I want to rid the, the universe of them. That's the reason why I'm even like, I would rather be under the Gith Yankee rule who are killing the mind flayers, because at least they're yeah. straightforward I mean, about their intentions. That's what I yeah. did because I don't trust the emperor. They they try to paint him as good, but the game is very clear that he's manipulative as hell. Yeah, yeah, but it's and like he's I, not a good guy. There's so, only I mean, there's one really good mind player in the game in so, Act Two, but so again, the the thing the thing ends up being that uh, I was just frustrated because the game gives you so many options. Again, this is one of those things where it's almost like suffering from success. I felt like the game did such an excellent job all the way to the end of Act Two of letting me do whatever the hell I want. And then I got to the end of Act 2, and they took that freedom away from me. And that was one of the things I was like, why'd you have to do that? But yeah, there was that, and then there was all the bugs, because I, I, mean, I had yeah, a I ton gotta, of I bugs. really want to work through some of the permutations, because there's ways around most of the stuff we're talking about. Like, you don't have to take the tadpole. There's ways to do the conversation, but you don't even take it. What like do you mean, take just... the tadpole? I never took the tadpole. Then there's well, there's he has the astral tadpole that he tries. I know the, to the one. The, the, yeah, yeah. I, I never took that. Okay, because there's way where you don't have to take that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no. That that was those that, that was not an issue. Like I, I told you, I barely used my lithid powers. I avoided it, which is yeah, why I there's, wanted. There's ways. No, I just wanted. There's ways to free Orpheus and I, fuck over the emperor. I, again, I'm. I just think that in a lot of ways, the game gave me so many good things. That the moment that the game pulled back just a little bit, I was like, I was resentful. I was like, oh, no, I don't want this. I don't <laughs> want to do it later. I, I want to do it now. Yeah, but I can recognize that the game is absolutely amazing. I've said it multiple times, but a lot of people think that I don't like the game because I criticize a little bit of that. And then there was also the fact that in third act, I had way more bugs than you did. Like that was yeah, one yeah, time yeah. where uh, the character with the wings because at this point we shouldn't be in spoilers anymore, but there yeah. was one time the character with the wings, she tried to arrest me because of a bug, okay? Like, there were people that wanted to kill her, they wanted to murder her, and I was like, no, no, I'm defending you to my dying breath, I fought the fight, so she shows up, she doesn't help, I have to kill everybody else by myself in a really tough fight, and when I'm done killing everybody, I start looting the place, and she's like, ha, huh, you're stealing and I was like, what, this, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, we, we had that happen the other night where we, we saved a whole shop from being murdered by a pretty much gang of ruthless people. Yeah. And the moment we we touch a book on the sh- on the you know on the shelf, it's like some people don't prescribe to your your ideas. <laughs> I'm like, what the and then we get in a fight. I got in a fight for throwing a potion at an NPC to heal them because they were running off in a way that yeah. was gonna get them killed. See that, and then they're like, "You attacked him." I'm like, "No, I didn't. I was healing him." Yeah. See that? That's the that's the thing. And and like, I can understand because the game has so many. There's just so many variables by the time you get to yeah. the third act. So I completely understand why that is a you know a situation that yeah. can happen. But again, I'll it was something though, like, that that negatively affected my first playthrough, which is why I felt I needed to criticize it a little bit. But at the end of the day. When I made my video, I said, I like this game. I can't wait to play it again. I want to play Dark Urge. I want to do all these things. Like, when I was playing through the game, I already had ideas for at least three or four other characters that I wanted to play. Because, you know, this is a game that lets me play as a dwarf. There are so few games that let me play as a dwarf. So I'm like, I'm going to play as a... You're playing as a dwarf and a halfling right now. Nice. That's awesome. But, like, so so, so I was going, I was going, like, so I played Bard. I want to make an Iron Breaker, which is going to be like fighter and big heavy armor, axe and shield. I want to play as a Troll Slayer, which is going to be barbarian, the least amount of armor possible, dual wielding. So I have all of these character templates that I want to jump into and make as a dwarf that it's just going to be no awesome. Time. Yeah, it's just no time. I also want to play as a runesmith, which is going to be a cleric. So I have tons of stuff. It's just, again, 
I'm I'm letting them cook while I'm going through this period that I'm also like super busy with other games. Yeah. And once I feel like okay, now we have a little bit more time available, we're doing another Baldur's Gate three run. I'm super excited about it. But yeah, I I gotta ask, considering the amount of hours that you've poured into it, just how different do the permutations get? Because a lot of games like this, and, and wildly, I'm not, yeah, a, a lot of games like for instance, Starfield is one of the games that gets brought up a lot because they even though they give you that illusion of choice, it's not yeah, really yeah, a choice. Not. A lot of people were testing it out and they tested it as like, oh, well, if I say this, this is the outcome. If I say that, it's the same outcome with a different yeah, line. Yeah, just a different line of dialogue. And, you know, that happens to an extent in the endings. So like that is, I mean, you can only have so many endings, right? So yeah, there might yeah. be a little small, or there might just be role-playing things where it's the same conclusion, but you get to say something that's more in line with your character. But... In the overall actual game progression, though, the permutations are ridiculous. Like, we've had vastly different experiences each run. To the point that, like, we had a run that was, like you were saying, I mean, it's not a spoiler to say that the two main conflicts is the Githyanki and the Mind Flayers. Yeah. Where we basically didn't get much involved with any of either of them. It was a completely another story that was much more focused on other stuff. It's kind of nuts. Like, I mean, Act 1, you could probably do a master course on Act 1 on just how crazy different of a game it can be. Act 1 um, is the best D&D experience I've ever had, including tabletop. It it was better than my tabletop sessions. That's how good Act 1 is. And I Baldur's swear, we've done it a few times, and I was like, wait, I've seen all the different variations. Uh -uh. No, you haven't. It's unbelievable, <laughs> the, all the other stuff you can do. It's crazy and I, I love that clip of that one creator who was talking about uh it's a it's a girl who was talking about like what got me hooked on Baldur's gate 3 and she was talking about how her and other youtubers or friends uh, uh approached the goblin camp and it it went kind of viral but it was a really good clip. i remember that yeah that that was good and it's funny because like, i've seen, I've like seen almost least, all those i'm like yes there was like at least nine different permutations of how you can kind of like tackle that one. One of my favorite ones was where she just rubbed poop on her face. I was like, what? You know, I purposely, I purposely did that and oh, I God. wanted to, but there was, I there were certain never. things that, I know there were certain ways that would, that would automatically have me bypass it. So one playthrough, I said, no, I want poop on my face. Oh God. So we very purposely lined it up. I did it and it was hilarious. The <laughs> amount of lines of dialogue they took just for that example exactly was so funny it, it's it's brutally funny and just the even the the quips like because when the when the game was still like at its at its peak in terms of social media popularity right i would see all of these shorts that people would make of the different scenarios and the type of stuff that the characters would say to each other like there are so many ridiculous lines that you never even get to see in your first uh, experience and and that's a very interesting thing when it comes to the design philosophy behind the game because a lot of people are going to be like well but i have to see everything on my on one play i don't have time it's like you don't understand the reason it's magical is because you didn't see everything that's what makes it yeah. so special it's because that was your playthrough that was what happened to you that's what made it special and i kind of feel like a lot of people can't get over that they 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 need to see everything and i think that that is completely the wrong way to approach it i feel like more developers need to be comfortable about listen we're going to make a whole last level or a whole last section that and a lot of people, people are, are gonna not going to see. It. <laughs> yeah. Like in, in the case of Elden Ring, the, the what is it called? Hollow Tree, whatever the place where Melania is. Yeah. Most people probably never even got there. It's a completely optional area. You don't even have to go there. And that's cool when you have those little that's hidden the beauty, things. Yeah. yeah. It's not just one. Like It reminds me of my disappointment with a lot of modern games. Even Zelda to a degree in some areas where you'd go all the way down a room, you'd break all the chests, and there just wasn't anything really defined. Yeah. And it's like, what happened to the good old days where, you know, if you went out of your way, there was something of interest. You know, they wouldn't tease you or be like, oh, there was nothing in here. They're all empty crates. Like, they don't do that in Baldur's Gate 3. There's always something. So, like... If, even if sometimes you don't you don't see it because you're missing, like, the right class, the right combination. You, you know what's really funny is we, we had one playthrough. I don't know if it counts, but we had... You can sacrifice one of your companions to a god. Yeah, I know. I know uh, what you're talking about. 
Yeah, and and three days later we had a game over because we we sacrificed the wrong character, <laughs> the one that's not supposed to die. <laughs> so I, I said, hey, we should do a run where we sacrifice that character, and then we have three days in game to beat the game. Otherwise, we get a game over, and so we can only long rest two times. Like that would be a fun challenge. <laughs> um, I, did cool. you do the tier list that I asked you to do? The I've been very interested of, to know your um, tier list of companions. Of companions, I I did it, but I didn't save it. I don't I didn't I don't know how to save that stuff even. But I can I can oh, I can tell you I no, but I can tell you very quickly. So I just I just need to understand one thing, uh, which yes. is wait, actually, it's still here. So all the <laughs> stuff is done. So do you want me to to tear them up by my preference of the companion, by their performance in combat, by their story? Everything. Like what? It could be whatever you find. Every like this is an awesome character. I may not like playing with them. I don't care. But you just like if I had so my them personal as a preference. Yeah, yeah. Personal. Okay. Because like that's I me. Mean, ultimately, every character comes down to so it's not so it's out. not about like the the performance of the actors or anything like that, right? Because like. We're talking I, about the character. Because you're talking about how much I like the character. Because the, the thing here is, yeah. for instance, like if you had, the if you the had very someone first with a with a bow and arrow, say I'm going to shoot three of them dead. Which are the first three you're choosing to say goodbye to, even if you like them all? Asterion, like, you Asterion, know I mean? and Asterion. Just shoot Asterion three times. <laughs> I hate him. <laughs> but the 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 interesting thing is, I think one of the reasons I hate him is because he's played so well. But yeah, if it's my yeah. personal life, I think we love all the characters. Yeah. I mean, I'll just say that. So yeah, yeah, all of the characters are are good. I don't think there's a character that I think is like poorly portrayed or anything. But so bottom tier for D. So I put Minthara in there because I never interacted with Minthara. I just killed her. I my 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 play. I just like not you dead. It's over. I I never even spoke to her. Okay. I'll tell you <laughs> one thing. It it's. I but, thought but here's it was the, here's, overblown. Here's, I thought it was exaggerated how good of a character she is. I no, thought, oh, people are just memeing, or it's funny, or it's like, oh, she's evil. No, that, like she is her own game. Like, yeah, I I understand. And here's the interesting thing: when I played the game, Minthara wasn't fully fleshed out, so you couldn't uh, like you could get her, but there were all of these conditions way, that I yeah. that I've read. There were all these conditions and whatnot about getting yeah. her. But the the thing was, I, I didn't even know you could get her as a companion. To me, she was just like, yeah. oh, there's three dudes in the goblin camp we got to kill. She's one of kill, them. Yeah. She, we got to kill her. That's it. I did realize she's one of she the was, most interesting characters in a video game. She, she was super amazing. hard to kill. She went down hard. <laughs> okay. I had to make like I had to use barrel mancy, so I literally made a wall of explosive barrels, and she ran into them, and I was like, "See ya!" <laughs> Just like, boom. So she had an explosive ending, so I never got to actually interact with her okay, character. Well, I implore so, you if you ever get to go back. You I must mean, like I said, I'm gonna do dark urge next time, so it'll probably fit right in, but uh, or maybe not. I'm not saying that, but yeah, I don't, don't, don't say I don't anything. Know. But. Uh, like I said, the the only reason I I don't even I wouldn't even consider it to be in the tier list because I never interacted with her character. Yeah, I don't you don't know. know her. Yeah, yeah. So at the bottom, the Asterion. I hate Asterion. I I hate him. I want him dead. I think he's super well played. I did his quest. Had to kill him three times to make sure he stayed dead, because the <laughs> it's it's a weird thing the the way in which it goes with a, at the ending of his quest. You need a very specific set of circumstances to ensure that you actually do the thing that gets him killed forever. So you know that was kind of weird. If you want to kill him, because there's obviously options, and you don't have to do that. But yeah, Asterion's at the bottom. Uh, C would be Jahera and Gale. Those two are on C. I don't know if you want to oh, talk about one okay. specifically. I mean, I I actually have a, a list here in front of me of of how well I know you. I'm thinking like, where is he going to put the? Oh, character? so I thought so you you're... were going to put Gale and S. You thought I was going to put Gale on S? See, I th yeah, I, think... I hate Gale, but I thought you would love love him. No, see, that's the thing. I think the problem with Gale is that uh, I didn't get to experience his character properly because of a bug. Ah, because okay. so Gale in my save file, even though I turned him down, he was like permanently horny for me. I don't know if that's just something that happens all the time, but like we've I tur never been able to romance him actually yet. <sighs> Nor would, nor do I want to. Okay, well, in in my listen, in my save file, it was literally all the time. He would, not, I would shut him down, and he would not shut up about it. 
He would not shut up. He was just like, at one point, we're covered in entrails. And he's like, hey, you look really nice. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> My character literally entrails on his face. What do you mean I look nice? So, yeah, but it's interesting how I can understand why that character is so incredibly arrogant because he's really well made. Again, it's a character that's super well made. Jahira, yeah. I never got to interact with her much, I feel like, so... It was just average, which yeah. is Because to me, C is average, right? Because then in, in your grading, yeah, yeah, yeah. in the American grading system, C is average. Yeah. So for B, we have, um, what's her name? Lazel. Okay. I, th I think Lazel might even be an A, but I want to romance her before I actually, you know, make the difference between B and A. But the reason she lands in B is just how much of a zealot she is. And I had to like almost break her mind out of her being a zone. Oh, but that's almost all of them at this point. Yeah, yeah. they're all so. Uh, Will is also B. I, fe I feel bad for Will. Will had a very bad accident happen in my playthrough. He's not with us anymore. <laughs> and Halston is also B. Wow, so far I've nailed most of your choices. Okay. Now in A, we have uh, Minsk. I like Minx. Yeah, he's a he's a big boy. He's a nice guy. He's just like, hey, let's do things. Yeah. Shadowheart is also on A. And that's the A tier. And then obviously an S. I mean, it's the best character in the game. I mean, come on, Carlac. I mean, come on. You can't beat Carlac. You can't beat Mama K. We we <laughs> we're actually in the the end of our revenge run where we had a, a an incident that stopped uh, you know, from being able to get the final romance scene with her. That and wasn't so... even that wasn't even a thing when I finished the game. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. so that's a, a that's something that we want to do. We 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 got that done last night. So next time it's my turn. But uh, <laughs> she is she's a sweetheart. Dude, Carlac is the coolest character. I loved Carlac. She was so so cool, and and the the scenes that you have with her. They're really cool, especially when you kill that one dude that is like a part of her quest and whatnot. Like that is is very very well made. I thought the, her. What kills was me is like well after you see like the the improved like once you're in a relationship with one of them and you you kiss them, just randomly at camp or whatever. You're like, hey, I want to give you a kiss. Once yeah. you see hers, you're like everyone else is so superficial at that point. You're just like, oh, they're yeah, mean, it is. You know, they're see, me. I didn't, I didn't and even you go to see Carlac, any of the other and it's ones. the most, it's the most touching heart felt moment they hang on it and it's just like oh listen you know it th again there was a bug during those uh those kiss scenes i remember yeah. that with uh because i was a dwarf i would usually end up just like snuggling against her breasts hey i don't mind. <laughs> i was hey. like yes that's exactly <laughs> the way it goes <laughs> being a dwarf oh, yeah. has its advantages see <laughs> No, but yeah, I think but at this point I'll it. say Baldur's Gate three. I think because we're getting to play it so many times, I think one of the reasons is because we're two people. Yeah, so you're enjoying it with a friend, but also because there are because it's a game. There are certain things that are just tasks that you need to do, right? Like when you do a run, like okay, we got you handle this area, and we'll split it up for most of the part. Like I'll do the left side, she'll do the right side. We'll do all so these mandatory you... tasks. I didn't play it multiplayer at all, but like yeah, you can freely adventure. Like she can assign. Okay, you get one person, I get one person. Okay, we that's that's who, what I was going to ask. Sue. If if you each would get one person, then then yeah. you'd go. Okay, yeah. Or you that's... can do it other ways if you want. Like I get two, you get one. Um, which I did yeah, for yeah. her first playthrough, so she can interact with more uh, characters. Um, but you know, being able to split it up means you get to tackle things faster. You can also do some really funny shenanigans, like. She'll get herself, you know, I'll get myself stuck in a situation. And I think she can look over and see it. And then all of a sudden I see two assassins sneaking up <laughs> <laughs> in my battle to help out. And they're like, -choo, 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 -choo. thanks. That's, <laughs> you know? but, but see, I do think that, you know, because fundamentally multiplayer is the essence of Dungeons and Dragons. It's the interaction between the players. And that does make it yeah. more special. I, I do want my Dark Urge playthrough to be a co-op playthrough. I need to probably rope in one of my yeah. friends to, to do it we with We saw me. a video series on YouTube that is so hilarious and is so it, well is done. It where gnomes, it's, it's a couple. Gnomes? No, no, that, that one's fine. But it was a couple who did it. And they did a thing where they did a Dark Urge playthrough, but they had 
a random dice for every single choice in the game, every dialogue choice, every everything. They had this random. They would put in like one through four choices. Boom. Okay, option three, and they would let the urge just take over for everything. So they had the most <laughs> ridiculous things happen uh, in the game because every dialogue choice became randomized completely, and it was. <laughs> I was like, okay, I want to do that. That looks really fun. So I, I do have something that I gotta, um, that I gotta suggest for you and you know, Whenever you feel like your hype for Baldur's Gate three is slowing down, you guys need to play Divinity. Divinity Original Sin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, That's the one thing I'm looking into. We both so are interested good. in playing Original Sin two. It's just a matter of, is everything voiced in that game or is it mostly text? Uh. I don't remember. I I played the whole thing, but I don't remember. It was a long time ago. I think I don't think that everything is voiced. I think that some quests are just text. Yeah. I think that's one of the beauties of Baldur's Gate Three that I love so much is that everything is voiced. Yep. There's it so much personality good. just oozing, except for maybe the journal entries, obviously. But yeah, but but like I I do think that it being multiplayer makes it so much better. And now I understand. Because I was surprised when Baldur's Gate three won best multiplayer game. I was like, oh. "Yeah, that's what this is. That's what that's what really cued my interest." I'm like, "Really? Is it that fun to play with another player? It's unbelievable. Yeah, <laughs> it's so I, good." Because, like, I, I remember that when I played Divinity Original, we played it in a party of four. So, like, my first playthrough of Divinity Original Sin two, we played it in a party of four, and we had some amazing moments. And I, I didn't know what I was doing because here's the thing. That game, in terms of its systems, it's completely different from Baldur's Gate 3. And mm. I went into it actually thinking that it was going to be kind of like Dungeons & Dragons. It is not like that at all, which is why my character just kind of like sucked through most of the game. But the cool thing was that we had one of our, one of our players decided to do a deal with the devil in that game. But it was, it was very different because he was dying. And then as he died, eventually, like, a, a, he died multiple times, like, three or four times. He says, oh, there's there's a devil that's speaking to me. Oh, I think I'm going to make a deal with this devil. And they're like, what? <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so he got resurrected by this devil. But then he died again, and the devil's like, you're useless. Transformed him into a zombie chicken. <laughs> Forever. Oh, good guess. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> Just a zombie chicken. But then through some kind of a glitch or something, we were able to like get him back, but we couldn't let him die because if he died again, he would transform. So we had to ensure that he lived through every scenario and it became like a little mini quest. It was really cool. It's, it's a ton of fun. It's one of the areas actually that, to leave Baldur's Gate 3 uh, on, a, on a good note. Also, I want to add in that one of the things about Dark Souls that I like but I also hate is that you can kill really important characters. And it's just, it's purely a negative thing. There's nothing good to come of it. You just, you killed someone, now you're screwed. You can't buy this item, you can't do this thing. Yeah. In Baldur's Gate 3, you can kill pretty much anybody as well. But it doesn't feel like you're screwing your playthrough. Like, none of the choices really feel like, oh great, I, now I'm screwed. Like, yeah. there's that... always fun ways around it. So it's I don't feel the stress of the choices. If anything, I'll do some crazy, stupid stuff just to see what happens because it's so funny. Oh yeah, like that that was that was me. I I'd, I'd be like, "Oh, I don't like this character. You're dying." Like Asterion, I don't like Asterion. He's dying. Like I guarantee you he's dying. <laughs> I'll tell you several playthroughs we didn't see much more than Gale's hand. <laughs> we know we never actually got to meet him. Dead. <laughs> Kill everybody. Uh, I think we killed Asterion in one of our playthroughs in the very first scene with him. Like I'm, like I'm gonna camp. tell, I'm gonna tell Dead. you right now. My next playthrough, he's getting a steak. Like straight up, the beginning of the game, you're getting a steak. It's that simple. And I'm not talking about but. meat either. So you know, just throwing it out there. But yeah, Baldur's Gate yes, three is. Yes, guys, I am obsessed. Me, me and Yuna are enjoying it. I, I mean, know some people were asking. They're like, I think they have this idea that she's like an elementary school kid still because they're like, wait, you're playing a it's, game it's, that's that that mature with her. It's like, it's that thing that I like told some you. Really, there's sex scenes in there. Like what? It, it's the thing that I told you where the the first times we started speaking, Yuna was like 11 or something. Yeah, yeah. But we've spoken for so long, and in my head, I was like, "Oh man, Yuna's Yuna's still 11." It's like, no, she's like four. She's going to be 15 this year. Or is it 16? Yeah. Going into tenth grade, yeah. Yeah, she's gonna be fifteen this year, so it's like she she keeps growing. They don't stop growing. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, there's there's it's been praised a lot, but I will say like the romance, the way it's portrayed in the game is so well done to the point that when you 
you know, most of the relationships do, they, they really take ideas like consent and the emotional backing behind stuff really seriously, where it feels very tasteful, where there are some interactions where it feels like I was used as a meat bag, like that was dirty, filthy, like compared to like some of the other stuff you get. So like, I don't know yeah. about consensual. There were some interactions that uh, <laughs> I'm not sure I consented to it, but I was like, all right, all right, <laughs> we'll accept that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, awesome game. I, I implore anybody who who may look at it and, and fear that like I did at first that, oh, this is what like the MMO FF14, right? Like it's like. This is so hardcore. It's so niche. I'm I'm not into no. these types of games. Give it a shot. It's Baldur, so fun. Baldur's Gate Three is really good. Now, I remember at the time there was this discourse of uh, people that don't like turn-based combat. They were just like, "Yeah, yeah. How can this? Uh, uh, no, it was it was during the Game Wars. That's what it was. People, how can this yeah, yeah, turn-based yeah. combat game win Game of the Year over Spider-Man Two? And it's like, play it and you'll know. You just don't get it. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, like, bro. Like, <laughs> turn-based combat is even fine. Like, Yuna doesn't like turn-based generally, but this is, you know, we love it. Yeah. Baldur's Gate 3 is excellent. Uh, I love my time with it. And, you know, I had some criticisms. I, I still have some criticisms of what happened to me in Act 3 and my feelings of the overall story and whatnot, but it is still a fantastic game. Highly recommend. As a matter of fact, uh, I know that Fighting Cowboy finished it and he hadn't done House of Hope. And I was like, no, 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 no. You need to go back. You need to go back and you need to do House of Hope, okay? This is, there, I mean, that's this can't be optional. Pieces, but there's it's some other so stuff, though, good. that's not as big that is just so impactful. It's just like, God. Yeah, it's, it's very, very good. But yeah, Baldur's Gate 3. Another thing that you and Yuna got to do uh, since last we spoke is you guys got to go to FanFest. I'm very, very jelly. Yes. You we need to, to tell us about FanFest. Fan Fest. Tokyo Dome. I'll be honest, the two of us, I think maybe it was the pandemic. Maybe it's just our personalities, but I don't think big events with people is for us. Hmm. Like, we don't like crowds. Um, we don't like sitting still for long unless we're at home playing games. Um, so it was really well done. I mean, it was at Tokyo Dome, so we had tickets for both days. Uh, it's, it's a huge stadium, obviously it's used for sports games and stuff. You had assigned seats. So it was really nice. You just had a seat there the whole day. Um, you know, they had the huge presentation, which was great. And you got to see that live. Uh, they had some other corners, some activities, uh, lots of products and food and stuff like that. And then a concert at the end of each day, we actually ended up leaving the first day a few hours early just because we were tired and we wanted to go home and play Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> um, I think the main thing we really wanted to see was the main note presentation. The keynote. Just sort of yeah. like feel, yeah, the keynote, um, the it's, trailers. It's a, different, it's a different energy when you're there in presence because I remember that in 2013, which was the first time that I went to E3, I had never gone to anything like that. And the energy that you get being there in the crowd is very different than just watching it at home or, or whatever. Oh, yeah. So the, the highlight for us, obviously, was the Primals concert. That was insane. Yeah. That I, was so good. Because I, saw, I mean, you're in, it was kind of freezing outside, I'll be honest, inside the dome. So we ooh. were pretty cold, which kind of sucked. Um, but we stuck around for the, for the concert, which was good, um, despite all that. But just the concert itself was really well done. The audio was really good. Everyone had their, you I, know, yeah, we I, had our light little things going crazy. And then it's like, I know it's, it's people talk about it, but when you have Tokyo Dome, which I don't know how many tens of thousands of people are in there, but it's a lot of people mm -hmm. and every single person freezes on the spot during that's Alexander. What I was, that's what I was going to talk about. It was so every, I mean, all the way in the back on the second floor, every single person stopped and froze at the exact same moment. Without I, being told. I saw I saw in Sokin's video some people were not in. I saw a couple of people still moving afterwards, but it was very few. But there were a couple of yeah. people who were, there were plants they did not know. Or maybe there were still sprouts. They hadn't gotten there yet. Yeah. But it was magical. That, that energy was great. Yeah. And then just 
for, for those of you that don't know, like if, if you actually look on Twitter for Sokin's account, I don't know what Sokin's account is, but you can actually see the, the little clip where everybody's going with the, the thing and it's uh, friggin' Alexander music and then suddenly it goes into the time stop mm-hmm. part and everybody was like, Doom. everybody stops and, and the music keeps going. <laughs> and the music is doot. And then everybody goes again. It's so good. <laughs> oh, it's so insane. Good. Yeah, the primals are awesome. I'm very jelly. Yeah, that was magical. I don't know if we'll do uh, a live event again, only because you know everything just is is a huge wait, right? Like if you want to go yeah. do something, it's like okay, wait for two hours to take one picture. But if you go during a speech, you can do it in two minutes. You know, it's like I don't like lining up for stuff. Did you guys take um, a picture with Yoshi P? No. No. Yeah. They didn't have the thing like the Western ones, which were smaller, where like certain people got to go meet him and stuff like that. Yeah. But we did have, um, what is it? Um, why is my brain freaking out? I don't know. I have no idea what you're talking uh, about. <laughs> you Ain't have... Scenario writer, the, the best writer oh, in the world right now. Ishikawa. Yeah, she passed by us and we got to say hi. Oh, she was okay. passing through the stages and just being a, a dork. She's lovely. <laughs> um yeah so that was really fun seeing all them like just right in front of you we actually saw xenos and and arthas there as Zenosis? well oh. were... <laughs> Did yeah you get... xenos and and arthas were i was there. i was trying i was trying to convince xenos to like do a podcast episode with me but he, he just like our interaction was super weird because like i sent him a message and he was like oh i can't do it right now message me after the the, um, the he was progging or something and i was like hey, what, do you, mean, so what do you mean busy. right now i just i just wanted to I just wanted to know if you'd be interested yeah. it was because i guess he thought i, w- I want to do it right now and then i messaged him afterwards and never got back to me so i don't know but yeah, yeah those those guys are doing a lot of fan service they had hundreds of people around them and oh i can imagine. Arthas was talking to him going i'm so sorry we have to go everybody and all that <laughs> stuff but uh, they seemed like they were having a good time are, you know that you know um, that Arthur's actually defended me in in one of my videos once where I got a lot of flack in Final Fantasy fourteen. I made <laughs> I made a video where I basically said, "Listen, if you're a healer and you're doing like leveling roulette, please, for the love of Sprouts, heal them, because like you know, <laughs> pe- people are coming in from other games. They don't know how healers do and." So they, they see their health go down super low. They panic. And a lot of people yeah. are going like super try hard. They don't care. They'll, they'll leave a sprout at like 10% health before they heal them. And so I made a video talking about that. And I got a lot of flag yeah. people like, no, I'm not here to fix your mistakes. It's like, you're the healer. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. what you're supposed to do. What do you mean? And yeah, Arthur saw, when- Arthur saw the video. He's like, he's right. <laughs> he's like, what are, you, what are you people talking about? He's right. <laughs> he's he's they're both super enjoyable creators i really enjoy watching their stuff oh and yeah it's funny because they're they're so self-aware that they're coming at a very niche part of the community and that most of their opinions don't matter to 99 percent of the, the average player and that's what i like so much is that maybe the people who listen to them and parrot some stuff maybe not get it but they get it they're like oh, yeah. look i'm a raider this is where i'm coming from man but they're funny but yeah it was a really cool experience um we got to meet actually uh, some people from our FC. Oh, who live in Japan, which was really cool. This is the second time we got so, to meet some members of okay. our FC. So I'm very. How the hell do all of you live in Japan? But you, I mean, I know why you play in Europe. I don't know why they would play in Europe. Yeah. So the friend we met, he's uh, French, but he lives in Japan, uh, and we got to meet. Um, so I guess he yeah, started he playing in EU, in and then he moved Probably, to Japan. Probably, I guess. Okay. I don't know. But, yeah. Um, yeah, that was really special. And the other time we had two people from uh, Germany coming to visit Japan as sightseeing, and we got to hang out with them. And we're good friends in games, so that was super cool meeting. And I've actually ex- to the cafe together. I've actually been jonesing so much for fourteen because, like, I've I've been thinking about it. I'm like, dude, next time I jump in the game, I'm gonna switch my main to Gunbreaker because I decided that I probably am not gonna be able to do, dedicate enough time to Savage again. And it's like, if I don't have to do Savage, I can play whatever tank I want. Anything this, you want, yeah. It, it doesn't, doesn't make a difference. But whereas if I'm doing Savage, I have to play either Warrior or Paladin because I don't know how to play the other ones as well. So I am probably, next time I jump in there, I'm probably going to be Gunbreaker. I'm going to go farm Bosja to get like uh, the Relic weapon, do all of that Ugh, stuff. That's, I hate that. I love Bosja, dude. I loved it. I thought no, Bajia I love Bosja. I oh. hate the grind for the Relic. 
I don't, the grind for I don't the final form of that relic is a real pain in the ass. I don't remember what it was. It's do do you have to do like uh, the lubrum? It's probably the lubrum. Well, you have well that too, but you also have to just do things over and over and over again until all the crystals drop. It's totally random. It's just like oh, oh yeah, I th I think the thing is I think I have enough crystals because I was like spamming. Yeah. I was just spamming Bajra because it was fun. I liked Bajra, so yeah, I love it was Bajra. Not a huge but, problem. Yeah. But, yeah, we're yeah. not actually we're on maintenance. We're not actually playing FF14 except to log in to do our maintenance stuff right now. But that's good. I think it's yeah, it's the, the perfect again, time to go and enjoy other games. It's one of those things where it's I think one of the best aspects of it is that, for instance, right, I haven't been playing it and I don't feel like I'm missing out. I'm like I'm excited yeah. to jump back in, right? And it's really cool. Whereas, for instance, in World of Warcraft, the the minute I fell off, I was like, well, I guess I'm never playing this again. <laughs> yeah too Cause, far behind. Cause, yeah i'm too far behind i can't catch up like forget about it now, and 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 let me tell you something i just like I, t I told you I, I jumped back into world of warcraft over christmas it was such a miserable experience to try to experience the story because they literally don't care like the developers don't care I, I, to give an idea so you know how we get the msq patches right Imagine yeah. if, you know, you did 6.0 and you took a break and then you come back in 6.5 and the way that Square Enix would give you the story would be like, okay, go do whichever patch you want. You can go do 6.5 and then do 6.3 and then do 6.2 and then do 6.4 and finally you can finish on 6.1. Yes, Exactly. That was my experience yeah, in World of Warcraft. People can't tell right now, but and, I'm I'm giving you the most bewildered expressions right so, now. Like, so so to give to give you an idea, because I actually wanted to experience the story in order. Through the game, you can't figure out what the order is. They don't tell you. So Are I was the just story is not connected. It is connected, but you, you can do whatever whatever part of it you want. And it's like, well, I don't want to go to a third party website to have to tell me which which part of the story I should be doing. I should be you should be able to do this in the game. And and it's yeah. like you I you love can't... the confidence of FF to say, you know, we yeah. got ten years of backlog and yeah. you know what? Play it. Just you're just one after another. Just go through just, it. Just You'll play love it. it. Yeah, it's it, that's that's the thing. And, no and... grinding required. You will hit you'll always be at the top lo top level as you go through it. Just enjoy and, it. And that and that was one of the things that, you know, by the time I you know the sub ran out i was just, bro i don't know if, i don't know how people can enjoy experience again the problem is that the people don't they don't they don't actually play the story they don't care and so the developer yeah. said well if they don't care we don't care either it's like so there's no respect for all the the, the work that you got because the thing is it's not bad it's not excellent but it's not bad it was it yeah. was decent and they were doing a good job but it was so weird for me because i would run into some quests and then I'd be like, okay, let's follow through with this. And then I would run into another quest, and I was like, wait, these events take place before the quest that before. I just did. This is so stupid. Not this makes no sense. Why am I allowed to do it? It's so weird. But then again, I, most people in that game, they're willing to just pay $70 to skip all that and go to the latest patch anyway. So whatever. Yeah. So dumb. Well, I'm looking, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward for Dawn Trail. That's going to be exciting. But... Um... Oregon Talking Trail. About, uh, What's more, that? Uh, Dawn Trail. Oh, you, I thought you said Oregon Trail. <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah, I played that back in elementary. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I kept, I even if I kept dying at the river that you had to go to in like the first hour, you had to yeah. cross the river and your your cart died, and I'd always have everybody die, and I was like, what the hell? So, but uh, upcoming well, games though, like come wait, on, wait, 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 wait. Before we go there, before we go there, before we go there, because we go. Since okay. since we just talked about an Activision Blizzard game, we might as well go towards um, we might as well go towards something that happened re somewhat recently. You know, Microsoft finally finalized their merger with Activision Blizzard, and then Phil Spencer went in there and said, "You fired all nineteen hundred of you. You fired." We're getting rid of you. Like, what? What? What are your thoughts on that? What? What the hell happened? How big is how? How big of a chunk is that? It sounds like a lot of people, but like, how many people are in Activision Blizzard? I don't know how big, because the thing is, it's not just Activision Blizzard people. Uh, because now that they've merged, they got rid of them, and they got rid of almost their entire physical uh, media division. The people who do like. 
uh, physical, you know, mm. games and, and whatnot at Microsoft because they're, they're clearly going in all digital, right? And I believe that the totality, so of Microsoft plus Blizzard, this amounted to like 10% or 11% or something like that of the, the whole company. But it was they just gutted a ton of teams over at Blizzard. They canceled their upcoming survival game, which was in the works for like six years. Was, no, was it six years? I don't know if it was six or I don't know, but it was in it was in the works. Like it must have been in the final stages of production. Yeah. We're like, nah, screw this. Boom, done, canceled. I mean, I'll just say in general, like the industry's got issues, like massive issues with this idea that, oh, we're gonna, you know, it takes hundreds of people to make a video game. Uh, for the bigger studios right and so they like they hire they they get all these people they work for years and then it's like okay the game's done before it even comes out some companies are firing team members like well we don't need we don't have the overhead to pay to these 200 people every month for the next four months the game's done and it's like I, it's such bullshit, right yeah like the industry can't continue like that where you just have people make your stuff they don't get their bo performance bonuses and stuff based on the game they're let go before that they're contracted or something it's just it's not healthy man and i hope the industry can figure something out i mean i it's that kills me i mean i could say like you know with huge company mergers i just hope that with the pockets as deep as microsoft that they gave really really generous severance packages I would imagine that, you know, there's probably a lot of jobs in there that are just redundant, right? It's like when two departments merge in a company, right? It's like, do we need 18 vice, you know, senior vice presidents of production? No. <laughs> do we do we need two heads of HR? Do we need 10 supervisual assistants for them? And it's like, no, 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 no. But you offer huge severance packages or other positions in the company, hopefully. But like, I don't know the details of how it affects their, their gaming department. I think it sucks, so. And you would you would hope that you know, the people who helped make that company successful, where they wanted to do a merger, although their position may become redundant or unnecessary, that they get some type of payout for that. You know, it's just it's, it just doesn't feel fair, right? It 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 um, sucks, and it really brings back to light the that message that Iwata did back in the day when. Uh, Nintendo suffered from something, some type of profit loss or whatever, and he was like, well, everybody in the executive is taking a pay cut because we're not firing anyone. We're going to keep our people. Because, again, happy people make good games. If you're just constantly yeah. worried and stressed about whether or not you have a job tomorrow, how the hell are you supposed to yeah, make I will a say, like, video game? I will say, full credit to him. Like He was amazing for that, but I will also say that the Japanese legal system is really good when it comes to employment. Um, so in that regard, that you can't people? you can't just you can't just fire a team. You can't just let people go. Like if you are a permanent employee, like they'll have to pay you out almost a year's salary if they wanted to just fire you and let you go for for no good reason. Like mm -hmm. it's 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 a different system here. The idea of full time employee where you you belong to the company, yeah. Um, versus a contracted worker. So I mean. There's protections in place that they have legally here where you just can't do that, which I think is great because in the West, like I hear horror stories all the time of like, yep, last paychecks uh, next week. See you. Goodbye. It's like, yeah. wait, what? <laughs> and you can't do that in Japan. Bungie, um, Bungie even did people more dirty because like they recalled people's stock options. Or I, I don't know how the stock stuff yeah. works, but I remember that people had like all of these stock things and they fired them and got rid of their stock benefits like one day before they were going to get a payout or something like that, that. Is just they just dick them all over it's like yup you're out see you give up give me my money goodbye that is just like the sleaziest scumbag stuff then there, there's also been the the riot layoffs where they got rid of like 500 people or something but in the case of riot apparently they got a super uh nice severance back like i think they were paying him six month salary or something like yeah, that yeah, that's after... usually i think the right way to do it is to offer half a year because it takes time yeah. to to do stuff for your life and then also yeah. help with relocation opportunities they, they help them with HR relocation and yeah they, they gave them... them to their partners you know and stuff like that they gave them like all of that is my understanding they got like a super good uh benefit package and whatnot well, and even like health I, I do insurance think a company and, is yeah. is its people you know and i think way too often corporations forget that yeah, like you, your people are who you are so you got to treat them good even if you have to let them you know you got to shift things around there's ways to do it and ways not to do it and this 
even even the uh, president the president of Blizzard said that oh yeah I'm also uh, now that the merger is complete I'm stepping stepping back which is funny because previously in the, in their last showing of uh, BlizzCon which is all their fan fest basically yeah uh, he said they're gonna have to drag me out of Blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have to pull that hard it seems <laughs> just like, yep. give him a check and he's like hey <laughs> okay i do bye. say yeah the whole the, in, the the discrepancy between what execs make in the west can compared i think people are underpaid in japan but i also think that a lot of people are overpaid in the west especially execs and board members to oh, point yeah. that a million percent. incentive like how do you give board members and top guys big money while and have record profits and then just you know, slash people for cost it just it, it sucks and 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 it's like they i think again they do they did report record profits is my understanding so yeah it's fantastic disgusting i mean that's the <sighs> that's the one of the sad realities of the industry because because the thing is 2023 was one of the best years we've had in ages when it comes to gaming like the, the gamers one that, yeah the, the, the yeah for gamers not not necessarily developers which really sucks but it the, it sucks doubly that you see that it was such a successful year with so many good launch products, and then you start 2024, and it's like, well, you're all fired. This this is this is a great party. Screw you guys. You're done. It's a super unstable industry, and it's not sustainable. Because like another thing was with as successful as 2023 was, 2024 is starting out like an absolute banger as well. And yeah. you know people are still getting laid off. It's it friggin' suck. This thing makes more money than Hollywood. How is this possible? Yeah. Like, um, it, well, it Hollywood sucks. also has a lot of issues as well. So yeah, but it's sad. It, 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 I it just really... hope. Go ahead. No, I just, I just, I don't know if it's a unionization or what needs to happen. I just hope something gets better. You know, it's not right. Yeah. It it's not right, and eventually it's going to come back to bite us in the ass. But you know, I also uh, think less companies need to be investing in AAA. I think the when so many companies are investing that much money on us a, a make it or break it title, like they they take on more than they can withstand in between games, and then they end up just like cutting everybody. And it's just like you just spent all that time to train these personnel, just just cut them off. It's like why would you do that? Like it's just not sustainable, right? And we're, we're yeah, going to flop or once something gets hard in development and it's like, we have to cancel it. It's like, bye. And then you get like the ridiculous crap that's happening with like streaming services. You see like they make movies and then just cancel it so they could take the tax write off or some shit. It's like, they don't even release the final product just so they can claim more in taxes. There'll be more of a loss to release it or they're taking down, you know, movies or something just because it's, it's better to report the loss. I'm like, is that going to happen to the game industry or is it already happening? That's scary stuff to think about. I mean, like I said, Blizzard canceled the, um, I mean, not Blizzard, Microsoft canceled the Blizzard survival game, which according to all reports from people that worked on it, they said the game is actually looking really good. We're really far ahead in development. It's almost ready for alphas and betas and whatnot. And it's like, nope, it's gone. Gone forever. It's almost like the same thing. They're, they're just doing risk and saying, hey, you know what? We can cancel it now, claim it all as a loss for operating income. Or we can risk this amount of mil millions to keep them around and finish it. Yeah, let's just kill it. It's like, yeah. <laughs> like what the hell? Something's got to change in the tax code or something. What are you people doing out there? It's it's friggin' weird. But yeah, like you, like you said, there might be... There might be something to people just need to focus more on maybe smaller, uh, smaller scope titles, which is one thing that we're going to yeah. be talking about a little bit later. But uh, yeah, it's it, it just sucks. We hope that things improve. And uh, yeah, my yeah, heart's hope, out to any developer affected, man. It, it's hope that everybody's able to land on their feet. Uh, now that we've gotten some of the bad news out of the way, let's talk about something that we're yeah. super excited for this year. Dragons Dogma Dogma 2. Two. So, uh we've had a lot of news about the about the game recently just yes Yeah, I, had, no, a, I had a meltdown on Twitter the other day actually. You did? I, I yeah, actually I, I don't remember little, I don't remember I deleted all it. my tweets. Oh, that's yeah, why I, I never saw it. That word too was I don't do that often, but sometimes, but this one was I was really frustrated. Okay. Like really really upset. So tell me what and upset you about Dragon's Dogma 2. So 
I realized that I've been so focused on Dra uh, Baldur's Gate 3 and other games that I really haven't paid too much attention. And so, like, the only thing that's coming to my radar is, like, the headlines, right? Yeah. And I, and I kind of noticed, I was like, I really haven't heard or felt that much good about this game except for the videos. Like, they, they all look fa fabulous, right? Mm -hmm. And then I started looking at, I was like, I want to do a sort of a, a refresher on the media for this for this game's marketing, right? And And see what, you know... What is everybody seeing when they skim and read and, and find out what this game's all about? Because they just had like a month of, you know, world exclusive, you know, with IGN. I'm like, so what was the coverage, right? Um, and I was very, very upset and dissatisfied with the coverage I saw. Not that, and the thing is, it's like I, it, I went through phases and I it all played out on Twitter because... I was looking at the video you did, and then the article they have where they're like, you know, which which one? I've done a what ton of what them. Uh, what travels not fun in your game? Well, that's because oh, your game's the... boring, you know, and stuff like that, and just yeah, all this amount of what I saw is being completely uncharacteristic of of the director Itsunosan. Like he doesn't talk down to other developers. Every all the headlines made him sound like this pompous, sassy ass. I'm just like. You know, oh, we don't use, you know, markers like, oh, you might die here. You know, we actually use environments. Like, what, are they digging at Dark Souls now? Or it's like, oh, your game travel sucks is because your game's boring. I'm like, that's not something he would say. And so I, my problem was is I thought that it was IGN Japan that was getting all the exclusive interviews. And that it was IGN English that was translating those and reporting on them. Because when I looked at all the articles... Because IG in Japan is what popped up in my feed for most of the time. Because they'd mm -hmm. love to just country yeah, they, screw they, you, right? It, it always, they only give you the country that... It always happens to me as well. So I usually have to like go out of my way. No, take me yeah. to IGN US or UK or whatever. And now take me to the article. Because I don't want to see the Portuguese no. version. Thank you very much. Yeah, because the problem... So I'm looking at the Japanese version. And my assumption was because he's Japanese and he's talking Japanese. So that was probably how they did it originally. So I was like, I want to see what he actually said, right? I don't want to see the English uh, translation because IGN has some sketchy history with some of their translations. Like, you know, Ooh. we, you know, tra translated by a Redditor said this. I'm like, well, you guys don't you guys have a <laughs> Japanese branch. You couldn't ask them what it says, you know, <laughs> like I had no trust in them. But the, so I'm looking at the quotes that were rubbing me the wrong way in the English articles. Then I look at the Japanese article and it's like 180 freaking degrees different, completely different. Like, really detailed, very nice, very, you know, there's this one section where he's talking about, you know, like, the feeling of excitement and how they wanted to recreate that and how they went on location shootings. They went to mountain climbing. They did pathfinding. They did all these team activities to try to figure out what makes getting from point A to point B an exciting endeavor, right? And it and the, I think the article, like, the overall theme he was trying to drive home was that you can see your destination, and it doesn't have to be far, but it's when you can't see what lies in between point A and B, and it's kind of like an unknown, like you go around a blind spot or behind the mountains, and you don't know what to expect, and that's the exciting part of adventure. And so they took that into consideration with creating the environments. And then you go to the English article, not only have they cut down half of what was even said in that Japanese interview, at God. least as it was written, then they're like, you know, it's all focused on danger. Oh, you know, you could die here. We want to make sure people knew, you know, where to be afraid and that anything could happen. I'm like, there's some like really warped agenda or like perspective being applied here because no. what I read in the Japanese is not the same. See, that's just flat out not the same. That's the thing. It's the, the friggin' negative bias that we have in social media and IGN is acutely aware of it. So they know, oh, if we make it like more provocative and whatnot we can get more clicks it's the same thing about youtube titles which it sucks yeah. i i hate this meta that we have to adhere to which is why again we even talked about earlier that the title that i made for my Baldur's gate 3 video i hate that title but i know that that's the title yeah. that ev everybody's gonna click and it sucks because people just don't click positive stuff so in a way, I can yeah. understand why they did it, but I wouldn't do it, especially like I could maybe do it, say, in the in the headline of the title to get people. But after that, it's like, look, yeah. you already got people in there. Now you can give them the proper information with all the details. You don't have to. Ugh. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is like, so I got really upset and I was looking at a lot of it and there was just so much things that were different. Like, for example, 
in the Japanese article where he's talking about the travel, he was just saying, you know, travel in games is generally not seen as a very fun activity. So this time around, he thought to himself, well, instead of thinking of ways to avoid it, maybe we can make it fun. Maybe that'll be the, the way that we tackle the problem. See, and it's very just focused on his game and how they're going to do it. He never mentioned anybody else's game. He never came off as condescending. So I'm like, what in the hell are you doing? Right. And and see, it's, but it's, then, it's uh, weird. It's weird because like, for instance, traveling in the original Dragon's Dogma, I believe I even mentioned this. It's not the most exciting thing in the original yeah. one. Like there were long stretches where you're just going through. So... It also came off a little bit weird to me that that's what he said. It's like, well, traveling is boring in your game. And it was like, I mean, I, I was never super bored while I was traveling in Dragon's Dogma 1, but it was also not the most engaging thing in the world, right? But, yeah. yeah. So it would be something weird of him to say. Yeah. So, I mean, what they were saying, at least in the Japanese article, it was more talking about, you know, yeah, we'll have fast travel. It's not going to be like, always available like you're not always going to have all the, i mean of course we'll break the game we'll have the gold for it don't worry yeah but like for the most players won't and the idea is that that you're not being punished for it it's that there's actually a lot of organic storytelling that will happen in between because you had to travel and that's what he it almost felt almost Baldur's gate to me like he wanted they keep talking in japanese about the focus of unscripted natural things that just randomly happened that felt scripted, that weren't, that were really fun and interesting. And the reason because of that is just the dynamic nature of the day and night cycles, what can happen, and just the amount of AI that they've put into it, right? With the pawns and everything else that they want everything to feel like it's just happening, right? Like they, they were even talking about how you don't go up to NPCs now all the time and, and just talk to them to yep. get quests. They will approach you. And if you just try to go walk up to somebody and talk to them, they'd be like, the hell do you want like like that's not normal for someone to just come up to you and like hi i'm the main hero what's going on that's like yeah. i don't know who you are get the hell out of here so like i see this overall tone and this focus that i'm really excited for but then i read the articles and i'm like that's not the same thing so i went off on a rant on on twitter and i was comparing the translation saying like look how different this is it's completely ridiculous like there was one where but then i i had to take it all down because then i started doing reverse checking so i was like well let me check you know i was like i was going off the assumption that the japanese the ign japan had the exclusive stuff but then i started noticing in the gameplay videos and stuff that it was the u.s side that had the hands-on so i'm like wait then was it the u.s side that did the interviews so i started cross-checking the articles and i started noticing problems in the japanese articles where they were taking for example they had a one point in an English article where they're like, okay, well, tell me about Dragon's Dogma 2. And this is an innocent example, right? And then Itsuno goes on and says, you know, well, this is like the next numbered title in the series. Um, you know, it's been 11 years and blah, 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 blah. And so he goes on. But in the Japanese article, they took his entire first part of his answer and they attribute it to the interviewer at IGN and said, hey, this is the next number title in your series. And well, after 11 years, like, you know, what were your thoughts? Can you please explain this game for newcomers? And it's like, it changes the tone, right? Because it's like, where is the focus? Like, who's who cares about this being a sequel or not? I'm like, wait, why are they attributing quotes, like actual quote marks, to the interviewer when in the English it was Itsuno-san who was saying it? I'm like, they're just rewriting it, like, with complete freedom. And then I watched a video article, because there was one thing that he said that seemed really off to me, which was they were talking about the NPCs and a love triangle. Like that was the headline thing in the English article. Oh, you can have a love triangle issue, you know, like you could be intimate with one character and another character and they get in fights and stuff. I'm thinking there's no way that that's like the, the takeaway headline. And I look at IG in Japan, they don't even mention it except for it's buried in an article talking about the AI for the pawns. So I'm like, okay, another classic example. They're taking the main message here and they're skewing it for headlines and clicks. But then again, like, so in the, the written article, IG in Japan, he, he's just talking about, um, they had an interview, and again, they're using quotes. This is what I don't like about IGN. I mean, I think they're good people, but it's like the style of their articles is that they will attribute quotes to people who didn't say it. They'll have the writer adding in some interesting opinions, but it's not clear that it's the writer who said it. It sounds like Capcom said it, stuff like that. But Jesus. they had a point where, where like, 
I mean, they're just, they're different articles. It's the same article, but they're not the same. And none of them are consistent with the video interviews. So they're both inaccurate. And yeah, so I started but... realizing I can't attack IGN US because I found lots of discrepancies with the Japanese ones now where, you know, for example, let me give you one. Um, I know this is obtuse and I'm going on a, a rant here, but <laughs> like they had a point where, you know, he's, he's talking in the Japanese article, the written one saying, you know, they really focus on the AI and the relationships between not just the, the NPCs and you, but the NPCs and each other as well. Yeah. So they wanted it to feel a little bit more like if you're going to go ahead and slap someone's brother upside the head, you would imagine that his brother in the game would be like, hey, yo, what the hell, you know, and not like you, right? Or or like, hey, I heard what you did to my brother the other day. Or like, screw you, you know, like not friendly with you. Mm -hmm. um, and that's part of making a believable living universe. So they were talking about how now all the NPCs have relationship gauges behind the scenes in the code for them versus all the other NPCs, um, especially ones that might be rivals or anything like that. So he was saying, like, you know, you could get in a situation where if you're really intimate with a character and, you know, they'll start coming to your, your house in the game if you're intimate with them. Well, if you also start doing another, you know, love interest with another character... And they come when the other character's there. So obviously, there's going to be a a disagreement and a, you know an argument can break out. Maybe not a fight like they said, and you know fight break out or whatever. But like there could be you know some issues. He's like, and so he jokes in the Japanese written interview saying, you know, in that case, I would probably just pick up one of them and and walk them and and drop them off in another area, almost as if to say like, hey, I don't want you fighting over me, you know. <laughs> but then the English article said like. Oh yeah, they'll come play at your house, and if they run into each other, a fight will break out. So yeah, the, you know, we just created we just created the system so that we could say, "Hey, don't fight over me, guys." And it came off like this is just like a an egocentric system you made just for shits and giggles. Like that's not what it says in the Japanese interview. Yeah, see, that's the thing because I I saw those interviews. And I always felt like a lot of those interviews that they, they did, I didn't do videos on them because I would watch the interview and I was like, there's just a big nothing burger. For starters, yeah. there's just a, but on top of it, I remember distinctly uh, reading the translations of the thing you're talking about. And I did not come off of the idea that there were even any romantic relationships at all. They yeah, just said they the these, these two Friendly. characters, these two characters just like fight over you. And I was like, Okay, I guess it's some type of reputation system, but you're talking about actual romantic relationships that you're able to have with the characters then. I mean, that's... That's, that's what the, they said in the Japanese the, the, version? The thing is, is the, the Japanese, when you see the interview, he's using words that denote, like, a close or intimate relationship or something where you're close. Like, when you say when you're close with somebody and that they would be offended if you had someone else that you're getting close with there... It's it's obvious what they're they were talking about. They don't have to be as blunt on the head and say you're yeah. in a, you know, a romantic thing. But they're not just saying like, oh, you're you're good buddies like that. Okay, that, that's so not it's, the it's hint. More but than the thing that. is, is okay. like, so I'm looking at and I found the Japanese interview because they took like one interview and they split it up over like six yeah. articles. Yeah, I, I, I saw I, I saw that. Yeah, I, I was I was I was the same way. I was looking at all these different interviews that are going up on IGN, and I was like, why why couldn't you just have like a good 20 minute video or 30 minute is tiktok really that damaging to people that we can't have 30 minute videos we're sitting over here no. recording one one hour and 24 minutes of footage right now <laughs> like yeah so what threw me off though was that in that in the video that corresponded with that one there's there, there's quotes that are not in any of the interviews so i don't know where they got it from and it's very different between the english and the japanese so i don't know which one is true so like I or, or probably none of them are true because I found many cases where what he says in the video is neither correctly transcripted in the Japanese written article and it's not correctly represented in English in the English article. So I don't know. It, there's like three versions of the same Jeez. topic that they talked about. So I was oh like, you know God. what? I'm taking down my truth because I'm attacking the U.S. site. It's not their fault. It, it seems like a bigger issue between their site and just the way that they do it. Um, but the thing is, is like I, in the video interview, he actually did joke and say what he said in the English interview, which was like, he's like, oh yeah, well we, we just made it to, you know, so you, they don't fight over me or whatever. And he, you can tell that he was joking and he was just, I think he's just playful with his words. I, I mean, he didn't come off and say, yes, I made this system because I thought it would be funny. 
you know, like I can tell that he there was some humor behind it, but it doesn't translate over well, I think. And this yeah. is my interpretation, of course. This is and why so, I like, stuck... And then I'm like, well, now it's contradicting, con contradicting the written article in Japanese. So I was like, you know what? I don't know what the hell is going on. All I could say is IGN Japan I, or Japanese and IGN English are very inconsistent with one another. And they're also inconsistent with their own interview videos. I don't know what to believe, but what I don't like is the overall headlines I'm seeing feel snarky and just edgy for no damn good reason. Because yeah. the, the, the stuff they showed, like the videos and the playthroughs, were all really interesting. It was. And, it was. Uh, their final That's preview was great. That's that's why I stuck mostly with gameplay coverage because I'm like at, I can analyze this and I can break it down with the experience that I have from the original Dragon's Dogma, and I don't have to rely as much on whatever you guys are talking to the devs about because I don't speak Japanese and I already know that a lot of times stuff gets really really. Yeah, so I, I I don't know what's going on with IGN, so I apologize to IGN for my rant, but I don't I fix your site, man. Like I yeah. don't know what you guys I don't know which one is the source because when they write the author for the story they don't put like this is the article and he, this was translated by this person they just they're all the author and so you don't know who actually wrote it and that just makes it even more confusing it's but like shit IG, IGN, IGN drama part like the actual stuff that we've seen from them so far is really cool like I love the idea it it's really good I love the idea of limited fast travel and a lot of people have given me pushback on this but I'm like, no, nah, dude, I'm all about it. And as a matter of fact, I now realize that, you know, how I was talking about, oh, we need all these inconveniences and Monster Hunter and all that stuff. Um, I'm beginning to think that, no, Capcom's just going to do that in Dragon's Dogma. Like Dragon's Dogma is going to be the inconvenience game. And I'm here for it. I'm ready. Take yeah. me to it. Let's freaking go. Yeah, it's just I I don't know. It's just like the the takeaways I get from all their the video stuff that I see is that it's going to have all that. It's just not spelled out like so bluntly as I see in the English articles, you know. Yeah. Like I think it's not like they're purposely making fast travel hard to do or limited. I don't actually see that being stated in the Japanese anywhere. I do have it. It's they it's do like say the same that thing. It's restricted, it, right? Like the same way well, it's that like, yeah, we had so it's like if you're saying one. like like fast travel is not something that's always available and free to do yeah. versus saying fast travel is you can do it, but it's, it's not always available. It's expensive. It's, it's a special thing that you do. We actually want, and you are going to want to actually do travel yourself. Like that's the default. And then fast travel is the icing, you yeah. know, where instead of just making that the default, you're essentially saying the same thing, but it's different, right? Cause you're saying we've made it inconvenienced or, you know, it's not always available, but it doesn't have to be, you know, it's like, it just feels like there's a different emphasis on the, I'm going to purposely inconvenience you so that each of your choices matter more because the thing that I saw in interviews, but I actually can't find any video. So I don't know if it's, I, it's probably correct, but it, it worries me. And I want, before we talk all about the cool stuff, I wanted to ask you about this one, but there's. Okay. IGN and a few other sites are reporting that they told Capcom told them that like the first game, there's only going to be one save file. Yes. Uh, and that both auto and manual save will share that same file. Wait, I don't think that's how auto it save worked. and manual save. That's I don't think what that's... they quote. Yeah, that's not that's how, how it worked in the first one. The first one you. Well, had... the first one it, I think it did work like that, but it barely ever auto saved, so you n would never notice. Yeah, I but thought you had. Is, I thought you had one was manual in a way and that one came auto. Off, like this game is hardcore. We're only giving you one save file, so you can live with your choices, and you know it, it'll add me. And I'm like, wait, what a second? They're taking like the honor mode from Baldur's, Baldur's Gate three and making that the default. Like that doesn't sound right. That sounds I mean, like plenty, horrible messaging for marketing. Plenty of games use that before PG yeah, yeah. three honor mode, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 kind of to me. It doesn't bother Here's me that the much shit out of me. because like. I look at it like Dark Souls. That That's what Dark... I mean, the difference is in Dark Souls, you have multiple yeah. characters, so you still have, technically speaking, multiple save files that you can have at the same time. But fundamentally, it works like a Dark Souls character, wherein whatever you do is whatever you do. And the reasoning why they're doing that is because of the pawn system. Like, they yeah, need to... Yeah, but people abuse the pawn system with the single save anyways. You can abuse the living shit out of that thing right now. 
Because you got cloud saves, you load up different versions, you can you can do all sorts of shenanigans. Yeah, yeah, but know? what I what I mean is like the reason they don't want you having multiple saves is because they want your one save to have your one pawn so that they can keep syncing that stuff up. That is the reason why I would imagine. It's like again, I don't know. Mm the exact reason why they're doing it i always thought it was because of the pawns because the, the the original dragon's dogma also has only one save file i thought it, it had one auto save file and one manual save file and you could switch between them i thought that was the thing in the original but maybe it's not yeah i don't i don't th i don't think so i think you could do hit continue but then you find out it was it didn't auto save for the last five hours and you're like yeah. what which, which is why um, I, yeah, I remember when it one of the tips that I would always mention to people while I was playing save the game off. is like, listen, press start, press R1, start R1, and All the it's the time. quick save. Yeah, uh, I hope but they get playing... better about about auto save for sure. But having only one save file is not something that bothers me too much, but I can see why it would be a problem for other people, especially. Yeah. It doesn't bother me, but I think there's an issue. Like, I I just think one the messaging has to be controlled better. Because right now it's just IGN and one other site saying, you know, we want your your choices to matter, and so we're going to force you into to live with your choices. There's only one file, and that's it. It's like that that gives the fear of missing out, right? Like there's a huge. Not I don't think it's 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 correct, but there's people who fear that okay, well I missed this content, and so that sucks. You know, I wanted to have a different choice, or if I made a choice that was bad, I wanted. You reverse it because I really like this character, especially because it's a game in which characters and your relationships really matter, and it's a huge game, probably. You know, my, and it's like my biggest thing when it comes to that would have to be the one improvement that I want to see from the original Dragon's Dogma is you need to make it more clear through some UI element or whatever which quest is about to end. Because you remember you had timed quests with yeah. an in-game time. So like if three in-game days pass, you're done, this quest is done, it's over, it's canceled. They need to make that way more clear and they need to yeah. optimize the, the questing a little bit better so that you, know, you can miss things, that's fine based on the choices that you made. But I, I, I don't like the idea of having the pressure of three or four quests yeah. that are all time-based and that can become a problem and that needs to be well, very I mean, clearly again that's going out with the same marketing message that there's no quest board apparently and that quests are given organically by characters to you yeah but the thing is is i saw them hit the pause menu and there is a thing that says quests so i think they're just talking about the way that you get quests is more organic i don't think it's about management of quests but I just, it, the messaging, I just think with this month of exclusivity and only giving like one interview split into 10 parts, I think they they need to do a better job of communicating because what they have looks really good. I just, I fear that, you know, like situate, I never had a problem in Dragon Dogma 1 and I beat that game like six, seven times, you know, and I did massive amounts of runs of that game. So I don't, I don't have that fear that it's going to break, but you do always have that risk, right? Like, I don't understand why they would want to egg it on. Because, like, with Baldur's Gate 3, like I had, for example, like, what if you throw yourself into an out-of-bound situation or you you accidentally clip an autosave location because you are on top of a, a Cyclops or a Harpy or something happened and now you're going to have a really hard time getting back, but your game autosaved. And now you're screwed I, I because remember, that's your I remember file. That happening, I remember that happening to me in Dragon's Dogma. Like, it uh, either it autosaved or I saved in a position where there was, like, golem laser straight at you <laughs> in hard mode and i was like oh no <laughs> this is not good <laughs> then you get the one thing that always annoyed me about dragon's dogma one was that how exaggerated the issue of leveling uh being tied to your class i know i always bring it, that up. i, I, I know, know I it affects min maxers min -maxers, it does i mean i guarantee you you can go to level 200 in fighter only, then switch to sorcery and be totally fine. Are you going to be min-max and do the max damage? No. Are you going to do a shit ton of damage? Yes. Because the gear at the end of the game way overpowers any stats that you have base. There's tons of videos proving that this is not going to affect most people. But I get now that people enjoy the min-max yeah, experience, right? There's, exactly. a, there's a good subset of people who love that. So when you tell me that there's only one save file... Then the, the next question comes, 
you're not going to have leveling up based on your current class, are you? The stats? And I'm kind of thinking they are because I'm watching the videos that they're doing on IGN and I'm noticing the stat increases on I their mean, level ups when they are a warrior versus a thief. They're different. Yeah, I, I, I noticed that all the way back in the showcase when they did the showcase and Super Rad yeah. was playing. I, I even showed uh. that in my latest video that when he leveled up, he got a certain amount of stats for a archer and then his pawn leveled up and it got different stats because Strength. it was a mage. So there's two yeah. there's two ways that they can do it. One way is you go to the Dragon's Dogma one way, which is exactly what they've already done before, which is kind of what I expect, to be honest. Uh, the other way, uh, which is a theory that people have posited to me, and that I've also thought about that theory before people mentioned it, but, you know, the matter. The other the theory is, say, for instance, you play as a fighter. You level him up to 100. You get all the fighter stats. And then you swap to a Sork, and they would give you, they change your stats to what the Sork would have had if you had leveled as a Sork all the way up to 100. Yeah, I don't. If they did it like that, that would be cool. The problem with that is that it also limits the customizability. So if you want to do Mystic it's very Spearhead. Very intuitive as well. It, it's not an intuitive. It's actually more intuitive. But well, it how would you know what your stats are going to be until you make that swap? And it, you doesn't, do that switch? it doesn't matter because if you don't like them, you can just switch back. Yeah, but what if you want to be a sorcerer that uh, has good that's power, the limit, you know? Cause that's the limitation. That's the limitation Ugh. of the system. But it's uh, there's no right answer because at the end of the day, do you think that it's a good experience for somebody that wants to min-max a mystic knight that they have to play as a sorcerer up until like level 200 and then they swap to the mystic knight? That's not I don't a, think it's a good that's not a good experience. Yeah. And and the other yeah. thing is, especially with the new vocation that was just announced, the warfarer, the problem then becomes it's like, well, I want to have a warfare. I might as well, you know, I want one that has a ton of strength or something. I'm going to level up as a warrior to level 200 and then I'm going to swap the warfare so that I get all of the warrior stats. And then it's like, yeah. oh, I just completely, uh, you know, nullified the downside of playing a warfare, which is to have lower base stats than the other characters because I just leveled up as a different yeah. one that has you, better uh, ones. Also, because like the first game, all, all vocations are unlocked at the start. So you can get vocations from other other players or other characters what if you find out at level 20 that you could have gotten this other vocation at an earlier level that would have give you an even more edge and you care about min maxing yeah. then you want to go back but you can't because you only got one save you need there is no way to make any checkpoints there's that worries think... me a little bit because i think the community will it's it'll probably be an issue for the min max people not the majority yeah but it'll be blown up so that the average consumer might think this is a this is a real concern because that's what they did with Dragon's Dogma 1. Everyone thinks that it's a big deal. It's only a big deal for min-maxers. It's almost like Savage Raiders caring about yeah. what happens to the, the, so, the Sprouts or something. What I decided that I was going to do is I'm going to just ignore stats. I don't yeah. <laughs> I'm I mean, just, yeah. I'm just going to play the game. Like, I, I don't Because I already know that whatever. I'm going to drive myself insane if I start worrying too much about that. Which is why I even mentioned yeah. in my video, for most players, this probably is not going to matter. Okay, you're gonna you're, you're gonna be fine. Play your mage, swap it over to a fighter, swap it back into Mystic Spearhand. Do whatever you want. You're probably gonna be fine. Okay, you don't have to min max to that extent. But for the people that do want to min max, you're probably looking at hey, first I'll do a playthrough, screw around, and then when I feel confident yeah. enough as to how it works, then I'll grab my character, go to the masters that I need to go to, unlock the character that levels up the stat I want, and boom. That, that's the way that I feel like min-maxers are going to have to look at the game, which is not as great of an experience as if you were just, no, I just want to play a fighter and yeah. I want to have the high damage there. But the Warfarer one, I like what they're doing in Japanese. They're calling it the Arisen. That's the vocation name. Why wouldn't it's they call Arisen. it Arisen in English? I know. It's like, I love the name Arisen because it's, 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 so it's, it's, it's something that only an Arisen could possibly do. Yeah. A normal human player could not specialize in everything yeah. because like jack of all trades right and swap between them on the fly which looks so damn fun i think i think um, the limit is probably going to be three vocations at a time because everything that they've shown in that recent trailer was three yeah. vocations they never go beyond That's three vocation lot. on each clip yeah but it is a lot That's a lot i was i was they already said thinking, yeah you'll have lower base stats but you'll be able to use like your whole tool set i'm thinking 
Well, if base stats are going to be like Dragon's Dogma 1, that'll matter for the first half of the game. But the second half, the gear will make up yeah, for it. So, like, is this just going to be an OP class or is it just the complexity of it all? I don't know. Like, I, I really, I have questions about that. I don't I, think it'll matter at the end of the day, but... I was already planning what my three classes are going to be. So I'm thinking I'm going fighter, doing? thief, and warrior probably. And the reason I want thief is because he's got the blasting Wait. powder skill. Because I saw the okay, blasting so powder skill go in the where? trailer. <laughs> so you're not gonna, you don't think you're going to specialize in, in one vocation to start with? Uh, fighter. I, I want. Okay. I, I'm even consider. I'm still considering whether I want to do a warfare with the three classes, or if I just want to do fighter. Because this time around, I'm gonna go fighter, and that's it. I'm just gonna go all out, shield, sword, and board. Let's no. go. I mean, it looks to be the same system as one, where you'll do one vocation and you'll unlock permanent buffs or something for your character that you'll want to bring into yep. another vocation. So, in the end, you're going to end up playing probably most of the jobs. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to um, play other ones to get the probably going to have to do uh, thief and archer to get the stamina skills and stuff that we had in the first one. Yeah, I would imagine that'll be a thing. And that was a really exciting system. I really enjoyed that. Where if you leveled up, you know, one vocation to like level ten, you unlocked a a passive skill that you can then select if you went on to do fighter, you yep. know, and you can really customize your character. Um, that was so fun. So I, I'll probably be doing archer again. I love arching, uh, <laughs> rangers, stuff like that. That's just my, I love it. I, I love what they've shown of, um, of the footage of, of archers. They seem even more nimble than before because this time they don't have daggers. It's all about the ranged combat. Yeah, yeah think, you don't have to worry about Which I think is actually a good thing because I remember a lot of times I'd be like, I want to have an archer in my party and I would have to take their daggers away because they were just like, nah, arch, no, nah, no, nah, bro. I got daggers. Default I'm slash it, away. Yeah. They would always default to daggers. It was frustrating as hell. I'm like, no, I want you range, dude. Like, we're playing on a hard mode. This monster will destroy you. Be ranged. <laughs> yeah, but I, this game seems to be a celebration of physics-based combat, and I can't wait for it because, like, they were talking about in one point where, you know, in the first game when you jumped on a larger monster, you were always clinging, clinging yeah, to them, you, right? Yeah, you, you, you had, could, to, you you had could, to grapple. Now, if, if, you, if you are on a bigger surface, you could stand up and jump and do all sorts of... I mean, if you fall, you could die, but yeah, they said, I, you know, they have pawns that might catch you or maybe you'll grab... They'll strategically, they have harpies all around that, like Colossus, so that if you are falling, you could just grab onto a harpy so you don't die. <laughs> I, I That was one of the first things that I noticed was that you didn't have to grapple all the time. And I was like, thank God, dude. It was so so yeah. frustrating. A lot of times we we're like, bro, I could totally just stand here and hit this thing. Shadow Colossus. Uh, yeah, you're just clung on the whole time. But it's really good, and it seems to you almost. It seems like the characters almost get a little bit of sticky feet because, like, your the monster moves and your character is still like yeah. in there. It's good, so that is very good. And it, and it looks like you also get different move sets when you're on top of the monster because, like, you see the warrior just plunging the sword into the monster's skull and whatnot. That's good. That is very good. It's it's good because warriors never really got a whole lot of grappling stuff, if I remember correctly. Yeah. It was more the the one handed classes that got that. So, yeah. My one desire, if I could have just one thing I want from this game, it's for them to do more monster huntery type stuff where if you have the griffin, I want to be able to craft griffin blades, yeah. griffin sword, griffin armor, griffin boots. I want that monster hunter experience where I'm going to go after, you know, a cyclops many times because I want to make a cyclops armor or something. That would be sweet. They didn't really get to do that too much in the first game. I don't think they're going to do that. <laughs> I don't think that. It would be so good. It, it would be amazing, but I, I don't know. Maybe they will, but I think that they're saving stuff like that more so for Monster Hunter. But yeah. yeah. The character create system, though, that thing looks wild. Did you see that? Yeah, how you get to like choose different permutations of the yeah, same Yeah, because it's like the, 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 every time you start choosing something closer, you're, you're eventually going to get to something that looks really close to what you want. Yeah. That's such a smart and simplistic way but must I've, be complicated behind the scenes i've always enjoyed the character creator in the original dragon's dogma more than the ones with <laughs> sliders because with sliders it almost feels like you always end up with some kind of an aberration that you've created yeah, whereas yeah. in dragon's dogma they're like okay here's 50 different face templates all right 
50 of them. I'm sure you can find what you want in here, please. And this time they're being even smarter about it. So I'm super happy because I'm going to be able to yeah. make exactly what I want. I hope that they still let us change the height. I haven't. No, yeah, I haven't I'm, I'm definitely going. It. I'm going potato again, like small little strider girl being able I to want, run under cyclops legs jump on them stab them in the back like i like that kind of stuff i want my compact your mountain dense oh your dwarf, dwarf. my compact because it was one of the few games like this that let me make dwarfs so i made two of them and i was like oh i'm so happy i get to have my two dwarves because most of these games, they, they usually have like, nope, here's our standard height because this is yeah, how yeah. we designed armor and fuck you. <laughs> so I, I hope they still let you change the height because that was really, really good. But Yeah, I would assume so, yeah. Yeah. The, um, I, I don't know how I'm going to get all this Baldur's Gate out of my system before it comes out. It's like coming out in like a month and a half. It's ridiculous. You think you have it bad? I still have two other games that i need to get through before i get there okay you, i can you, do it you don't know the struggle all right you, you just don't I know the do struggle it. but um everything from a gameplay standpoint is looking good it was interesting seeing the first 18 minutes or so of ign gameplay that you know because they, mm. they made a oh here's 18 minutes of gameplay and i'm looking at the gameplay and i'm thinking do you know how to use skills like there's one where the warrior is just doing aerial greatsword and i was like you understand this isn't monster hunter right he didn't use skills at all uh, this is weird but a really cool thing that that i that i saw was also when he was fighting the um, is it ogre yeah it's the ogre the one who gets like all excited whenever he sees yeah, females yeah. and whatnot and i remember that at one point he gets stunned and i and i paused the video and i said See, usually these ogres in the original Dragon's Dogma, they would drop kick you at the drop of a dime, dude. It was insane. They'd drop kick you all the time. I unpaused the video. Boom! <laughs> drop kick drop to the kick. face. <laughs> it was beautiful. Like that that ogre starts the fight just like drop kicking from across the bridge. I was like, bro, it's so good. It's straight up the original. A lot of stuff from the original is still there. Do you remember from the showcase when they defeated the, I mean, they, they didn't defeat the Cyclops yet, but they got it down on the Cyclops and the Cyclops falls, breaks a tree. And then his head is like, his chin is stuck on top of the tree. It was so good. Ah, uh, man, I can't wait. Yeah. Dragon's Dogma 2 is going to be absolutely amazing. How do you feel about yeah, the I'm, there's a rumor going around right now that supposedly it's going to be 30 FPS on consoles. I mean, it was 30 FPS on the first game, so I mean... Yeah. But it's like... It surprised me. Is, is that something that bothers you? No, because, I mean... I mean, would we want 60? Of, of course. course. Of course we want of 60. Of course. Um, but one of the things I love about the first game was the frame pacing is so well done... That once your eyes adjust, like you're coming off of an, a 60 FPS game and your eyes, it looks a little like, you know, janky at first. Give it 30 minutes. Once your eyes adjust, that game, it feels great. There's there's one thing that I need to make clear. The first time you played this, was it PlayStation 4? Right? Switch, actually. Switch? The first Switch. time you played then, Dragon's then, Dogma was yeah. on the Switch? Okay. On the Switch. And then I played it on PlayStation, then Xbox X, and then PC. Because people have been... Typing. And I actually enjoyed it on Switch just as much as I did PC. Because yeah. because people mentioned in, in one of our podcasts where he said, oh, the frame pacing of it is actually excellent. People are like, the hell is he talking about? It was terrible. Yeah, it was back on PlayStation 3, not on Switch. Oh, I didn't play on PlayStation, oh, PlayStation <laughs> Yeah, exactly. 3. On PlayStation 3, it was really bad. <laughs> like the, the frame rate, it was terrible, dude. Yeah, it was, Switch, it was Xbox, not perfect. There is XS and PS... Yeah. Five, I think, or four, and then PC were all but in, fantastic. I, I remember that on the Switch, I was very surprised at how well it ran. I didn't play it through all the way, but I remember just testing it out to see how it ran. And I was like, damn, this actually is pretty friggin' smooth. I'm surprised. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's like Monster Hunter Rise as well, right? Like, that game's not 60 yeah. FPS on Switch, but it's smooth enough in most areas that after you play it for a while, you it's fine. Like, it becomes yeah. a negligible thing. 
I mean, would we whine in 60? Yeah, and I hope I hope it's 60 on the PC because I've got a beefy PC waiting for it. Um, it's it's the same thing. Like to me, I will always take frame rate when I'm giving the choice, even if I have to tone down visuals. Give me 60 all day. But at the end of the day, if all I can get is 30, I'm still going to play it. I'm going to play it at 30. Yeah, but if we're going to get like 30 and it's going to dip like... Like right now, Baldur's Gate 3 is fixed. But like Act 3 used to be like horrendous. When it first came out, like holy crap, the frame rates would just die. Yeah, on some situations um, for sure, yeah. But it's much better now. They've, done, they've cleaned it up really well. Like if you're going to see something like that, I'd be concerned. But in the footage I'm seeing, I don't see that necessarily. So... I would say why worry about it until we know and, and yeah. until you I mean if if you play it and it, it plays well then it plays well you know like leave it at that so I think you know if you can come up with any like people are really up in arms or wondering about this I was like no they're not 99% of people don't give a shit right now about FPS of a game they just want to know if it's fun and if it runs okay and they'll figure they'll know that when the game comes out I'd say 99% is maybe a bit too high. I think there is a decent chunk of people that do care, but I, I'd say they're probably in the 20, low 20s percent. Not not low 20, lower than 20. Okay. Sub 20 I mean, if I'm going to be less, you know, exaggerated, I would say maybe five, less than 5% is Damn. my guess. Okay. I think it's, I, I still mean, think it's a little bit higher. The great majority who might get the game probably aren't even following it. Yeah, there, there's there's right there is there is a lot of people that aren't even like in social media and following stuff. And you there know, is game this, comes out, looks great, they'll get it. There is this tendency that we have because we're so terminally online that we think, oh, everybody else is terminally online too. No, no, definitely not. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> they are not. We we get we get frustrated at people buying like uh, garbage microtransactions. Like those people don't even know we exist. <laughs> it's, it's, it really is like that. It sucks, but it is what it is. But Dragon's Dogma Two is looking amazing. I'm super pumped for it. Have you seen the the stuff about the trickster? What it can do? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw the trickster, and that looks interesting. I am very curious. You know, if the pawn system is that smart. I, I really wonder if you could just be a chicken shit through the game, you know? Like, be a healer and let your pawns do all the fighting for you kind of thing. Yeah, Be but... a trickster and let them do everything. You probably could, and that could be really fun, because I hate it when games don't let you do that. Yeah. Like, they're, they're, they're so invested in forcing you to be the one who does the most damage that the AI holds itself back, you know, on purpose mm -hmm. until you catch up. Like, even FF14 does that with the trust system. Oh, yeah. Like you'll you will not get a dungeon quicker than twenty seven minutes. Like it will adjust its attack speed and everything if you start slacking. I want to see a game where I can literally just I I went through this world with with these three pawns. I'm a pass, and I was their backup boy. I I healed the shit out of them. I sometimes distracted enemies, but for the most part, I I just sat back and watched the carnage unfold. That would be pretty cool. But the the really cool thing that I was talking about was how they make like fake walls and whatnot, and they make fake fake platforms in the ground, and then you yeah, put yeah. your little your little taunt dude there, and the, the goblins just like yeet themselves into the abyss. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. It, it, it probably requires yeah, too much setup I, to do all the time. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking barrel manty fun. though. Like, can you imagine just like having enough bombs or barrels? And just having the ability to put up a decoy and get people to go there. Oh. And then boom. <laughs> like with with three other rangers just sitting there with archers waiting for it. Like boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Like the one, I hate to keep going back to Baldur's Gate 3. Got, I'm a sub, obsessed with it. But yep. we did a run that w we were so OP. And I'll tell you what the strongest weapon in the game is, is a cat. You no. can summon a little cat that just goes, Mareow! And the enemies within a certain radius will come to see what the hell's going, what it is. And you can yeah, use I've that used to that. insane effect to, we basically baited everybody into small little corners and assassinated the entire game. No, like, but like, it was you can't call that, you can't call that the best thing. The, the most powerful weapon in the game is the, the owl bear from the top rope. <laughs> <laughs> Um, That's the but I'm serious, like weapon. being able to bait enemies can create some really fun scenarios. Yeah. And I hate to be the guy to say it, but I'm like, I do think that I don't think the lack of multiplayer is going to hurt the experience, but I think the inclusion of it would be freaking amazing. Yes. You know, like, Very I mean, the pawn so. system, especially the AI system for what I see is going to be super fun. It'll feel like you're in a party. 
It's going to be super customizable without having to micromanage the shit out of all of them. That's fun. You can throw pawns away, get new ones with different jobs. You don't have to worry about your pawn dying because you just revive them. So it's like, it's really user-friendly and fun. Yeah. But man, could you imagine a game like that with support for a second player? Jeez, it'd be so good. Oh, and my God. Especially for Please, you and DLC. Yuna. Please, DLC. For, for you and Yuna, it'd be amazing, yeah. That's what makes me work, because I really want to play it with her. Yep. Well, you, you're going to have each other's pawn. You're going to have each other's pawn. No, because... No, because she'll be as bad as me. We'll recycle our pawns the moment we level up. I was like, wait, I'm level 20, you're 19? I don't want you. I don't I'm know if pawns don't pawn. level up with you this time around. Who knows? Yeah, we don't know. But the, but the thing is, the moment you sync up with the server, the pawn level will be upgraded. So you just like send the pawn away and then bring him back. <laughs> Recruit same pawn. But yeah, that, that's going to be <laughs> absolutely awesome. I think the the one yeah. thing that I wish that people would do because this is completely outside of Capcom's hands, right? It is they've created this system where they want you to experience the world organically through the pawns. The pawns are going to go on quests. The pawns are going to do stuff, and then they come back with information for you. The fail point of the system is that there's going to be a ton of players out there just like extra life. Oh, here we go. I know exactly where this quest is as opposed to discovering it organically. And that's the thing that really frustrates me. I wish that I I don't it doesn't frustrate me actually. I'm actually I'm more open in my older age now that I'm forty three. I I'm I'm wiser than I was at forty two a month ago. I feel more like I know I'm No, I feel more like if that's how they want to enjoy it, then whatever. That's yeah, no, fine. no, but that's that's fine. But I think I, they're missing out on something something really cool. Yeah, I'm just saying the part that's going to suck is if I happen to recruit a pawn from one of those players, and then the pawn knows everything about the world, and it's just like, there's a quest over there, and another one over there, and another one. Did and you so, notice? Uh, no, there, there's an option. They they actually specifically said, and they had they showed in there that if you don't want the pawns to be leading you and telling them, you can select that. Like, don't lead me like i don't want to no, have my hand held yeah but the thing is i think it'll be even if they know it it would be interesting if you know if everybody was discovering it organically then i think it would be more interesting because like oh there was a player that did discover this organically and i want to go check it out too and then my yeah. pawn tells something that i discovered organically to somebody else that is the the basis of the system but it kind of gets mm. sabotaged if if people just go through third party websites to do stuff, which you know it's all it's always gonna True, happen. Yeah. There's there's no getting around that, but whatever. There's a hidden wall over here. Wait, what? <laughs> you know, that'd be great. That, that's 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 the dream. But yeah. Dragon's Dogma two, gonna be awesome. We're super mm, excited about it. I can't wait. I wanna I wanna pick your brain about uh something else. So there's this game that's been making the rounds. I don't know if you've heard of it. It has these uh, creatures. They're called pals. Pokemon with guns? No, no, no. They're called pals. They're not Pokemon. They're called pals. Uh, and the game is called Pal World. What do you think about this game? I mean, you haven't played it, I would assume. Yeah, I, I haven't played it. I mean, I've heard that it's doing really well. And I, I, I've read the, the controversies. And I was kind of like, well, wasn't this the same thing that was being said when it was first announced? Like, it was like very obviously yeah pokemon with guns inspired so to say the d designs were like almost like i think i like, think the, oh come on now like the problem that creative. people have right now i think is that when we first saw the trailer if everybody came out of it with the same idea that i had it was like this is a joke this game's gonna come out it's gonna be a janky ass piece of trash nobody's gonna play this this doesn't matter but at it's all not, right it's, it's an authentic it, game that was worked on it's it's actually a polished game in a lot of ways to, to me it makes me wonder though like i don't know the full breadth of it but obviously from what i've seen the designs seem overly inspired if not you know lifted obviously and customized from pokemon i'm thinking are they doing their game a disservice, you know? Because it sounds like what they did was make an original game. That's interesting. Like it's it's would... it's not as much super original as it is very is it much get inspired by this whole controversy of I no, as, if anything, it's the other way around. Mm. Because all of the buzz around it, people tune in and they're like, Oh, what is this thing? And then the the price point that the game is at is pretty cheap. It's like thirty dollars. What is it? 
Oh, okay. it's thirty dollars. So it's like, and it was discounted on the first couple of days, like ten percent or whatever. So yeah, it's like people hear about the controversy. They look at the game, and if they see impressions from creators that actually played the game, like me, I'm not going to tell you that the game is bad. The game is fun. I had a lot of fun while I was playing the game. Like, that's that's what I'm going to say in my video. And that's what is happening. A lot of creators, they play the game, and they don't know what to expect. And then they're like, oh, this is actually pretty fun. And so you look up the game because of all this controversy that people just... It, it's the Streisand effect taken to the nth degree yeah, yeah. because you have a ton of Pokemon fanboys that are like, oh my God, they're ripping off all my Pokemans. And it's like, for starters, it is heavily inspired. Like the art style is pretty much the same that you have in Pokemon. So does it, is it, do you get the impression that they, like there is a case of like, okay, they need to investigate whether or not they're actually pulling models and, and using them? Or no. do you think it's a case of like me looking at like something like the Life of Pi and being like, wow, they just like completely just copied uh, Dark Souls homework when it came to UI, it's, you know, and, like, and Bloodborne. It's like which that. is kind of like it's like like okay, it's that's like kind that, of pathetic, but, but you know, whatever. Like it's it's like what you just it's your uh, the thing that you had with Lies of P and Bloodborne. It's like that, but the thing is, this this might blow your mind because it's not actually Pokemon at all. Almost from a gameplay standpoint, it has nothing to do with Pokemon. So the whole point is. It goes after this survival game called Ark Survival Evolved and takes a lot of elements from that. Then it goes after Breath of the Wild and it takes a lot of elements from that. Then it even goes after some of the artistic choices of Elden Ring and it takes some stuff from that. <laughs> and they just put all this thing together and a lot of people would call it's that lazy. Yeah. They, they would be like, oh, this is so lazy to do it like this. But to me, it's like, but it works. It's a functional product. And it's and when I say it works, I'm not talking about, oh, it's a janky ass mess. Like there yeah, are yeah. systems, there are systems that are not great. Like their grappling hook is terrible. Like your character glitches the fuck out all over the place. Yeah. But you the get, game is a as a package product. Yeah, or, the game like, is a, a package. Concept, it works. It works and it's a lot of fun. Now, it's not finished. It's an early access, but there's already mm. a ton of stuff for you to do. Like to give you an idea, I'm running a server of it right now, because they include the server with the game so even yeah yeah even if you don't want to go because they have official servers so you know when everybody was complaining i don't know if you saw this but on the release of the game because there's you know millions of people trying to log into these servers to play multiplayer right on the release of the game the servers they were kept going down and people couldn't connect and it was like i didn't have that problem i grabbed the server that they included with the game I booted it up on my personal computer and I made a server for me and two other friends. So we never had issues. And the fact that they just included the server with it, I was like, wow, that, I don't think a lot of these games do that. So it, it's almost imagine if you had the technology to make your own Final Fantasy 14 server. Like what the hell? Yeah. So I have, we have our own server and we're just playing through, we're building stuff and it's really fun to play in co-op. And it is at the end of the day, a survival game more so than a Pokemon game. So you're building, crafting, doing stuff, and then you just have the pals. But the cool thing is, usually I don't like these survival games because they feel like chores. Because like, oh, go chop a hundred trees to get yeah, yeah, wood yeah. so that you can have the materials for the thing. In this game, the pals do that. So you just get automated. a bunch of pals and they automate the whole process. And the only thing you, you know manage is they, they need to be fed, right? You need to feed the pals. Uh. But... What happens is you have some pals that know how to seed, you have other pals mm. that know how to water, and then you have other pals that know Why how not? to carry stuff from one place to another. And so you automate the whole thing and they feed themselves. They feed themselves, they produce surplus of food, wood, stone, all the materials that you need, the pals take care of it. And that's the beauty of it because you don't really, unlike a lot of these other survival games, you only have to struggle for materials at the very beginning. Then everything gets automated mm -hmm. and you have everything that you want. And then you just have fun. You're just hunting pals. Like you're collecting them all and all of that stuff. And it's fun. Nice. And then some pals have guns. And in my <laughs> case, I found one that had a rocket launcher. Nice. So I just go around, boom, blowing stuff up. It's great. I think it's fun. Now, it's it's still not really the type of game that I tend to play super often, but it's fun enough that I want to keep playing it, and that's the thing about Pal World. Like, I think it's cool. 
so what is the the situation over there in Japan though? Because I would imagine there are even more fans of Pokemon over there. How do they feel about Pal World? I mean, I'll be honest, like Japan's been a little weird with gaming lately. Like if it's not on the Switch, no one's talking about it. The top thirty games, top twenty nine are all Switch games. PC gaming is very quiet here. So it's like I mean, I've seen maybe a few posts about it as if like there's there's some foreign game that, you know, has been like the topic of discussion. But like I don't maybe I'm just not looking enough. Maybe I just had my head too buried into what I've been doing lately, but I just haven't seen much conversation at all about it. Hmm. Like Interesting. at all. Cause... So like it seems to me like is this a Western developer, I assume? I don't no, know. No, it's I a Japanese no developer. <laughs> it's a Japanese developer <laughs> called Pocket Pair. Oh Jesus. The first the first thing the the one of the games that they've done which I thought was really funny is a uh, Craftopia. I looked at the trailer from Craftopia. They straight up lifted the opening cut sequence of Breath of the Wild shot for shot. <laughs> They're just <laughs> completely shameless about it. <laughs> so Yeah, the, the yeah, I mean Go ahead. No, I was gonna say like there's there's something to be said about you know whether or not you find it distasteful for somebody to heavily be inspired by somebody to the point of just like not I guess you could say lazy, but like like taking someone's harder work to just recreate that magic in a way. Like, yeah. and if that rubs you the wrong way, then it does. I mean, I don't like it usually, but you know, like I'm happy to hear at least that it sounds like there's a nugget there like there there's is good. there's they, there's they something... found some cool gameplay mechanics because i think touche i think you know whenever every game borrows from some game in some way the best thing is when some company finds a mechanic that works yeah. because then you can get a company who has the more the design chops or the the care for the the art that might say okay i'm gonna take something like that and really make it into a unique universe that feels more uninspired from other works then we end up getting a cool subgenre that takes off, you know. So, it it's just uh, I don't know. I do I do get I do get a kick out of I, I don't I'm gonna get some hate for this one, but I mean, if you straight up lifted an asset or if you are just like copying it, yeah, that's it's I find it lazy and laugh, and I think it's fine to get ridicule. But I also think that there's some arguments I see like this looks just like this Pokemon. I'm like. If a two-year-old was told to draw a circle with eyes, that's what you'd get. Like, yeah, exactly. how inspired do you think the Pokemon <laughs> designs are? <laughs> it's the, the that's one of the things that bothered me a lot because people started coming up with theories. <laughs> the where sheep. It's, yeah, exactly. Oh, shit. The the sheep one is 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 so blatant because it's like, oh, this is clearly they ripped off the Pokemon sheep. It's like it's a sheep, dude. It's a cute sheep. I, I, like, how many? Let's cross reference Dragon Quest monsters yeah. and Pokemon and stuff yeah, like that. It's let's, like let's do some that of them one. I get. Like I totally like. Okay, now that's just like lazy. Yeah, but the, um, and, it's, and it's it's fire. But then there's some that's just like. Really? You're going to claim that that's like a design I, copyright thing? I remember I remember at one point they had this this one pal and they were like, "Oh, see clearly this one has the head from this one, the body from this one, the tail from th And I was like, "Bro, you want to pull any more references? Like what, yeah. what do we do?" I think you, you you just said so you're telling me this is an original work without telling me it's an original. <laughs> yeah, it's a, and, and the the other one was you know Lucario. So this game yeah, yeah. has one that kind of looks like Lucario. Except Lucario is obviously inspired by Anubis, and this one yeah. looks exactly like Anubis with the same color schemes. It's like, what do you want? Like, you know, it's Anubis. It's an Egyptian god. <laughs> like, there's, it's 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 a weird thing. And, and the thing that really bothered me at the start was when people started saying, "Oh, they used AI to to copy Pokemon and AI spat out." But and I was like. It would be easier to just get somebody to copy Pokemon stuff than to get a goddamn AI to do it. Uh, Gaijin is nodding right now. You guys can't see well, it. It's like, what would what I'm wondering is like, what would why did the conversation shift to AI so much? Because when the because, game was first announced, I think most of us had the knee jerk reaction. It's like, wow, they just straight up looked at it and copied the design. It's like that's lazy. Is because but it's like, w why is that so much? worse or different than is if they used a tool to do that it's not any different 
No, but the the reason Except, why... I mean, if they were if they were like copying it and then saying, "Hey, it was the AI who did it, so yeah, it's yeah. it's technically mine," then I get it. But like that doesn't seem to be the focus no. of the conversation. And and the the reason why people brought up AI is because they have an AI game called Art Imposter where they do use generative AI. You know, where they disclose that they use generative AI. Yeah. Why would they lie if they were using AI on this one? But on top of it, it's also because at some point the developer made some offhand comment about how BuzzFeed was using generative AI to generate. Post- Pokemon and he thought that was cool. That's why they think he's using AI. It's like I mean, I don't know. AI is such a misunderstood yeah. word and concept that like it's like what do you think procedurally generated content is in a game? Exactly. You know, like it's AI. That's the program using AI to create something based on templates. And now and, the data feed might be different, but it's like and not even just that, one of the things AI. that always come to mind is when people, because it's like there is an argument to be made, like say for instance, if I'm an artist and I have an art style that I create and somebody uses yeah. an AI and feeds it my art to generate. Yeah, that's an issue. That's a problem. But like, oh yeah, if same with voice work as well. Exactly, like voice work, kind of same thing. But like for instance, if you're using AI in animation, it's like, do you need the artist to individually animate every frame of an animation where you could have an AI automate the... Like, come on, what are we talking about? It's dumb. You know what actually hit me the wrong way was, do you remember there was like a video where some two guys put in a shit ton of work and it's basically, it wasn't even AI. It was more like a, it was more like a filter. Was that where Corridor they, they Digital? Make, I, maybe they tried to make like a little mini film, like a medieval thing of two guys like doing a fight, whatever, and make it look animated and they're like wow it's like animated but it's it's mostly ai or tools or whatever but you like look at what they did and it's like no they did artistry like they 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 went in costume they filmed themselves they applied filters to it to make it look like it was hand animated but it's at the end of the day it's creative work like they actually created the damn thing it's like but everyone was up in arms like oh my god there this is, looks like shit and it's so dumb. These AI bros. I'm like, they didn't just put a prompt and hit a button. Like these are people who actually yeah, created that's, something and filtered it. That's the it. thing that it's people different. think. They think that AI is just like, oh, you you prompt. Oh, clearly they they just said that spit, might be. Yeah, spit like, out I mean, a. Put, they, it's like they think that people went in there and said spit out a Pikachu 3D model, and the AI is like, Bloop, here you go. Here's like, your Maya model. <laughs> that's Can not you please rebrig it. it. That's not how it works. But I anyway, mean, one day it might be, but I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a, there's some really bad points of AI, which I hate. And I think yeah. they're a thing, but it's, and if there's a problem with AI, there's just as much problem with a human doing the same thing, in my opinion, Yeah. whether it's tool assisted or not. I mean, but yeah, I, I know I that you're... I, it's, it's, it's nuanced, but I, I, I feel bad for artists in some ways, but some people really need to educate themselves better. Yes. Tell me about it. Uh, I know, I know that you're eager to jump back into Baldur's Gate three, but uh, before I, I'm you eager do, to go make dinner soon. <laughs> before you do, PM. I got, I got to talk yes. to you about another game because you mentioned this as well. Brand Blue Fantasy Relink. I've been waiting for this yes. game since yes. Scalebound was canceled. I've been waiting for God this game. Damn. Too. So it's been a long so ass time. Forty years? No, been it's more, more, years. Like, more like seven years. <laughs> I think about seven years. I've been waiting for this game. So. Have you played their gacha game, the the Grand Blue Mobile one, or? No, I mean that's quite a dated game. I I couldn't get into the the old school nature of of how that is. But I'm a huge fan of side games in general. Like why? Because I, I, I don't know any well, of their I, output. That's why I was curious. Well, when you said I religiously I don't play it anymore because I stopped playing gacha games, so to say. But I still occasionally log in and do some stuff. But I really enjoyed Princess Connect. Uh, is that Princess one Connect. of their titles? Uh, Princess Connect Redive is one of their huge titles. It's like a, it's 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 an, an anime. It's also it's a game. Like it's really good. I I, okay. I like that universe. I I've watched the TV shows. Got the DVDs. Got some of the music CDs. Like, I really enjoy their work on that. I think it's super high quality. Um, Shadowverse. I'm I'm a big fan of. I love the Switch game that they did. It's criminally underrated. What uh, what is what is Shadowverse? It. What is that? So Shadowverse is a card game think something like Yu-Gi-Oh. um it's 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 a card game that you play on like ipad iphone whatever mm-hmm. but they made like a full like tv animated series here i don't know how well it did but you know they tried to to make it a new thing so they took like the first six major sets and they made a switch game out of it it was it reminds me of like Yu-Gi-Oh tag force 
when it came out for the PSP. It's like back when like Magic Gathering was in revised edition, you know, like the rules were a little bit more simple and things were more balanced. It wasn't like, you know, reading a book when you want to read the effects of a card. Yeah, tell me about um, it. I, it I used really to like good Magic. Time. I used to like Magic back in yeah. the day. Can't get into it now. Well, the Shadowverse is super fun. Like it's a really good game, especially those first like dozen sets. It reminds me a lot about like really early Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic where like it just works and it feels so good. And the Switch game was so well done. And the thing is, like, Shadowverse itself, like, on the iPad, like, me and Unum played it a lot. And it's another gotcha game. Like, you, you're, you're buying money to get packs or whatever. But yeah. we did it because they actually had a collaboration with Princess Connect and we wanted to get those, those packs and cards. And we actually fell in love with the game. It was really good. Um, but we're not going to spend the money to upkeep it. But when the Switch game came out, I got it. And it's, it's just, I don't know, there's just something about that studio like Psy Games puts out really quality product i love grand blue to me always just came off as like a really dated game that it's a legacy thing they've been keeping up for like a decade yep but like their modern games like the ui the just the general art direction the sound like they put a lot of effort and they're Dude, really talented that that is one of the things that instantly uh the moment i jumped into the demo of fantasy relink i was like whoa this this ost is actually really freaking good which is something that they usually got. you don't even notice it that much, but it was instantly noticeable mm. to me. Like, I really like this OST. This is really cool. But the art style of the game is also gorgeous. The gameplay feels fantastic. There's only, like, one thing that really irks me about the game. It's too easy. Yeah. The, the well, that's campaign. something that they can probably fix later, right? Maybe. Yeah. The, the campaign that they they gave us a couple of uh, difficulty options, I went with hard, and it feels too easy. And I'm currently, because I think the problem is they've developed this like they do for Gacha. So Gacha is this constant like, oh, you level up your character. Now it's yeah. more powerful. And so as you are going through, maybe there's a ton of power creep and I don't even notice it, but I just destroyed everything in the game. Uh, and I'm currently at halfway through, well, not even halfway. I think I'm on the tail end of the Maniac difficulty, which is I did the campaign on hard, then you get very hard, then you get extreme, then you get Maniac. And at the end of Maniac, the game is beginning to feel like, ah, this is normal difficulty now. <laughs> so it's like, it took a long time. Yeah. But other Science than that- is just one of those companies, I don't know. Like It reminds me of like when level five was at their peak. Like level five now is it's become a pet project from for Hino Sun, right? Like and it's like they're kinda of went into obscurity, but like at their peak, like they were making really good quality, interesting, fun new IPs and stuff like that. Psy Games is like that type of company to me. I thought that uh I don't know, do you know what Uma Musume is? No. It's um it's so they this is genius. They took a they took the idea of like an idol game of like, you know, like the the, the cute girls singing performance, all that. And like that character growth type of game and they mixed it with hardcore horse racing so these girls mm -hmm. are technically horses and they've got it's like mikote they're horses and they're super like the personalities are really done it's a super like interesting ip that they created that did well here because they also did um idol master cinderella girls with side games as well um Rage of Bahamut was another old game that they did. I love some of the characters from that. That's that's something um, that I meant to ask you. Like, what's the deal with them using Bahamut? I thought that that was like exclusive to Final Fantasy. Like, what? No, no, no. Bahamut's just because they they Bahamut. use Bahamut. I mean, that's like saying Leviathan like, is Cthulhu owned by somebody? Is Leviathan owned by anybody? Like, these are things from old school cultures and fables and stuff, right? Because so I, like, I had only ever heard of Bahamut in Final Fantasy, so when they when they do the first summoning in Grand Blue, they're like, ah, oh, primal beast, thy name is Bahamut. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Bahamut? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> I didn't expect yeah, that. Yeah, D&D also has Bahamut, right? Uh, like no, Bahamut I don't is, think is so. like from old school, like... I don't think D&D has Bahamut. Let me see here. They might have a behemoth, but not Bahamut. And it's not even like the, what people would expect from final fantasy behemoth I, I don't know maybe there is a bahamut yeah i don't know maybe it was created by final fantasy but i always had the idea that the bahamut was from uh a mythology like a uh, old school thing yeah but grandpa fantasy yeah, Relink but, is, uh, is really fun it might be something I that you I and you know you this enjoy. figure i got but i've got a i've got a really nice figure from one of their uh rage of bahamut 
characters. I just love their stuff. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, anyway, that's probably. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, I was gonna say I'm Go I'm ahead. super excited to hear that their game is doing good because I when I heard I, that I they were know, making a I don't know if game, it's, I don't know if it's doing good or not to be honest. I like, I just re I just really like. They make it. good games. Yeah, I good I just really stuff. like the the game is is where I'm at with it. Nice. <laughs> Oh cool. well, keep me posted on that. I'm curious. Maybe I, th I, think, I don't know if it's something I would like or not, but I think you and Yuna would might potentially enjoy it. It's um, it's not overly complicated, and it has that um, monster hunter. It's like so you have 20 hours of story, which you can almost look as like Rise Village that you have to do solo, and then after yeah. you do those 20 hours of story, uh, the game opens up to. I mean, it always has a couple of multiplayer quests that you can do together, but after the 20 hours, it really opens up and it kind of gets the Monster Hunter structure where it's like, here's these key mm. quests. You do these, we unlock more quests. You do these, we unlock more quests. And it's the same thing where, oh, I have this weapon. I want to upgrade it. Okay, the materials that you want come from this monster. Go kill it, get the materials, upgrade the weapon. Except it takes that to the nth degree with your weapon upgrades and whatnot, and you have all these things that yeah. you got to do to fully upgrade it. And then you have this giant mastery tree that you're just going down through and spending oodles of points in, but it's really fun. And it has a situation. But it's system. not like a transaction, right? It's a paid. No, like, no, 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 no. You one time purchase it. There's no pay to win nice. elements, nothing. It's just, it's almost like you take all of the progression systems of a gacha game and you put them in a real yeah. game and you know it's this that's all i wanted side games i love their stuff but i they're they're gacha games i want i don't want to see the predatory because i mean gacha games are predatory to begin yeah. with so they're not the worst offenders but it's like i want to enjoy their games without spending a bloody fortune <laughs> so yeah and i think that Granblue fantasy relink does a really good job of that like I don't think it's going to be something where you spent a thousand hours in, but I could see myself yeah. easily going over 100 on it for sure. And that's like for one or two characters and they have a bunch of characters. So if you really want to min max them and whatnot, it, there's a lot of progression to be done. And it's just, yeah. it's is, just fun. Is, uh, is, uh, what's her name? Digita? Is she in the game? Uh, yeah. You basically Digita. get to choose between her and Gran. Yeah, she, she, she's she's they have their whole like sort of side games universe where they have yeah. so many original characters that they use them in a lot of their games and she's in a lot of their games. Yeah, so Jita th the funny thing is, uh the main character is Grand, you can even name the main character. Uh and then after that, you can just customize him. So at any point in time, you could just now I'm Jita. Now I'm Grand. Everybody just refers to you as the captain because you're the captain of the nice. ship. So, yeah. It, it's all you cool. gotta do to sell me on it is tell me that Cerberus or one of their other uh, Rage of Bahamut characters are in the game, and I'd be sold. I don't know who Cerberus is. I mean, I can tell you, I can tell you all of the characters uh, afterwards because I don't remember all of them by by heart. But there's there's a lot of characters. I, th I think the game has almost twenty playable characters or something like that, and each of oh, those wow. characters basically has one gimmick that you need to to do. So like. Grand does charge attacks after his combos. Uh, Oigan is a dude that throws grenades and then fires and they explode. So every character has a little gimmick like that. And then everything else is mostly just uh, four skills that you choose from a pool of skills that they have. And then mm. sigils, which work kind of like monster hunter skills. Oh, so you have you know, these... I'm actually kind of scared now. I think the character I really like, one of them is a Grand Blue character. Is Olivia, the fallen angel, is she in the game? No. Okay, Sorry, because okay. <laughs> no, like, I really like. Now, Olivia. now Olivia I have to play awesome. it. Is is that it? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I bought like a three hundred dollar figure of her just the other few weeks ago. I don't know who Olivia the Fallen Angel is. Okay, good, good, good. Okay. <laughs> Maybe she'll be I'll in the future. Out, they're they're adding. I'll, I'll check characters. out the game though. Just check out I, the demo. Wanna... They have a demo on PS Five. PS Five. Okay. They don't have. I'm a still demo reluctant on to touch my. I'm still reluctant to touch my PlayStation. It's so funny. <laughs> I just have this allergy to it. But I then mean, again, I've been on I PC want, for most of I the wanted to now. play it I wanted to play it on PC but PS5 had 3 days early access, so I was like, well, ah, but it I is on really PC. It is on PC. It came out and from what but I've heard the demo from, is for PS. The demo is only for PS5. From what I heard from 26 and Paradise, the PC version's running fine, so there shouldn't really be any problems okay. there. Well, if there's a free demo, I'll check it out. That sounds good. Yeah, you should. And you can even play multiplayer on the demo with Yuna to see if she likes it. Nice.
So yeah. Maybe we shall do that. But anyway, guys, I know that Gajan needs to get going. I, we've already kept him over one hour more than yeah. he committed to. <laughs> so thank you for making the time. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode of the Third Fleet Podcast. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll talk to you guys in yeah, the next I, I, one. Go ahead. I want Monster Hunter stuff. I was going to say, some people are like, yeah. hey, why aren't you doing Monster Hunter videos? Because there is nothing to talk yeah, about right now. <laughs> okay. There's, but beyond wild when speculation. When there's something to talk about, I, we will talk about it like blue in the face. Don't yeah. worry. Hopefully we'll get something in March, like a little morsel of information before the big info dump on uh, on the summer. I hope, I hope so, yeah. Or maybe we'll That'd get for nice. ultimate, for ultimate oh, in March. Oh, come on, for ultimate Riz, let's go! Give it, give it to me. I will replay it. <laughs> All give right, it, give team. it, give it. That's going to be it for now. We'll see you guys in the next one. Stay strong. Stay safe. And happy hunting. Play lots of games. Yeah. <laughs>